Championship Sunday. Let's go! A long season has reached its final day to be played out on one of the most explosive fisheries in the world. Ten anglers left in the game, and what we have seen so far has been astonishing. The Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race has been settled, and the winner is set on winning the tournament here today. Records could fall, and the competition will be fierce. Championship Sunday on the mighty St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario. No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Well, it may be the closing day of the season, but everything is on the menu today. It could be the biggest day of the season. The 2023 in the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River. That was the scene at takeoff, Clayton, New York, the Antique Boat Museum. About, uh, well, about an hour ago, 10 anglers have made it to Championship Sunday. And Mark Zona, you can't pass up another day on the greatest smallmouth fishery in the world. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. We hear from a lot of folks that Lake St. Clair, Lake Erie, Mille Lacs is the best playing field in the world for smallmouth bass fishing. Well, that would be from somebody that has never fished here. The St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario. And here's the best way to put it, Tommy. We've got about 100 miles of St. Lawrence River and about another 100 of Lake Ontario. And Lake Ontario has absolutely dominated five of our top 10 right now with a five pound smallmouth average. Just incredible. Yes, records are going to fall today. And we are set up for a big match up today. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands to start this day. Patrick Walters of South Carolina just absolutely knocking him dead for three straight days. Stands at the top, not far behind, is Kyle Welcher, the man who clinched the Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title yesterday and everyone's favorite coming into this. Chris Johnston of Canada is, is not very far behind either. Those three at the top. And guys, as, as we welcome you into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, when they're slinging around 20, 28, 29 pound uh, limits throughout this tournament, as they have, we can't count out anything happening from below those three, too. No, I agree with that, Tommy. And really, the entire story of this tournament so far, and we got to wrap it up yesterday, was your Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year. Kyle Welcher and it's what he has done throughout this tournament throughout this week sticking to a game plan especially on day one we'll probably run some footage because here, here's the best way to describe Lake Ontario itself it will test you mentally it will test you physically and on day number one he battled about 40 miles of water in six to eight foot waves and got it done. Sticking to a game plan is the reason Kyle Welcher is your Angler of the Year this season. Just one of those great, great eternal type sports stories. Ronnie Moore, we got a lot to watch today. Man, there was some big movement at the classic cut line. We talked about some of the most iconic names and legends of the sport champions from the Bassmaster Classic Pass that we thought may miss out on next year's big dance. You always want to make the classic. They were able to slide into the classic cut while some of our rookies fell out of the classic cut. There's still some anglers fighting for that today. Scott Martin, if he gets fifth place from his 10th place starting position, he will be Bassmaster Classic bound. Kyoya Fujita, he wants to win Rookie of the Year. He wants to win every title possible. If he wins the tournament today, he also clinches Rookie of the Year. Anything worse, Joey Cifuentes is your Rookie of the Year. Give you a little taste right now of what we have seen this week, this incredible fishery. The fish don't seem to get bigger every year. They are getting bigger yeah, every year. And this catch from day number one, the biggest bag of smallmouth in Bassmaster history. Brian Smith of California with 29 pounds and five ounces. It doesn't even look real. No, you made the comment. It almost looks photoshopped. Almost 30 pounds of bass and scary. If you really watched what your Angler of the Year winner did throughout this tournament, it just seems like a four pounder was scoffed at. And it was making about a 50 mile run every day, 35 miles of that out into Lake Ontario. Fishing relatively shallower than years past. We've seen out in the big lake, really from about 15 out to 23 feet of water. And for the most part, 
he's been left alone, but a lot of your other leaders within five miles of Kyle Welcher, but a flawless performance so far from the Alabama angler. Well, we're going to run down all of Kyle Welcher's uh, work that done throughout the year. It was an amazing effort throughout 2023 for this young man who was disappointed at the end of 22. By a, by a tough season, including second place in the Classic. But boy, this season has more than made up for it. And his biggest moment in his career took place on stage yesterday. In 2023, the progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year belongs to Stone Cold Kyle Welcher. From a poker pro to the top of the sport, you gambled on yourself, and that gamble has paid off in spades. At Okeechobee, they asked everybody to write down who they picked for AOI on a dry erase board, and I wrote myself. That's uh, the ultimate goal in bass fishing, is to win AOI. It's just, that's one of those titles that never goes away. Nobody can take it from you ever, and it's just like one of those things that the people who win those are, you know, well respected. Seeing how you can string together good decisions throughout the course of a year, I think it'll give me confidence to possibly win some tournaments. What a big week it could be. It's already been a big week for Kyle Welcher. He can tack on another 100K at the end of the day. And we've got 10 out there today. Scott Martin, Matty Wong, Justin Hamner, Corey Johnston, Kenta Kimura, Taku Ito, Joya Fujita, Chris Johnston, Kyle Welcher, and our leader, Patrick Walters. Let's take it out on the water right now. Of course, we're going to be on Patrick and each one of our competitors today. This is this one. Yeah. Yes, this yes. is a oh, this was yesterday, oh, sorry. Yeah, and really looking at that top 10, some of the best smallmouth bass fishermen, no, not on the lead good. series, but some of the smallmouth ba ba bass fishermen, the best that we have ever Completely. seen. Patrick Walters fishing about two or three miles away from Kyle Welcher. Definitely think, on dude? the Here right quality up. and what? stopped early oh, yesterday. Dude. Stopped at about oh, noon, okay. made his way back to the takeoff in Clayton, New York. And did Chris Johnston save the best for last? He's had a tremendous performance here. He always does, but he's he's not satisfied yet, obviously. No matter what happens today, he's in the top 10, Tommy. Even if he falls to 10th place, this is the 20th straight day of Elite Series competition that he has been in the top 10 on this body of water. An unprecedented record for any angler on any fishery. Chris Johnston. One. So strong here. It's going to be hard to beat today. We guarantee you he's going to be in it. And we guarantee this guy is going to make a run at it. Yep. Koya Fujita, he's got to, not only the tournament on his mind, he's got the Rookie of the Year prize on his mind as well. Yeah, and we're kind of starting to get word right now that Kyle Welcher is having a little bit of a mechanical issue possibly this morning. Uh -oh. We're going to look into that. Davey Hyde is sending us some text. But looking at Koya Fujita, yeah. There's one common theme between, get ready for this, every Whoa. angler in the top 10, all of them yeah. fishing Lake Ontario. And we're gonna talk about that yeah. right now. Looking at the state of New York right there, the Minn Kota unlock the lake, the Northeastern basin of Lake Ontario. That's been the biggest player. About 90 miles of the St. Lawrence River has approximately zero of your top 10 anglers fishing in it today. <laughs> Really, it's gone down on the Canadian side. Two anglers concentrating on the U.S. side. That would be Scott Martin, and Scott Martin and Taku Ito fishing on the U.S. side of Lake Ontario. But the rest of your anglers fishing the north face of Lake Ontario, all the way from really Reeds Bay, Amherst Island into Prince Edward Bay. See Kyle Welcher still around our takeoff. Going to try to get some information on that story right now. But we're going to get up to uh, Patrick Walters right now. Wow. Right in the mouth, Prince Edward Bay, Patrick Walters Live. A little company over there. And we are definitely getting word right now from Davey Height that we said Kyle Welcher made a gamble all week long and put his boat to the test. A couple mechanical issues, and there are about 
four or five techs working on his boat currently back in Clayton at our takeoff. Wow. And that's what, that's why we talk about Angler of the Year, even though he was leading the event. Like, hey, it's, listen, if it's he a good day it, yes, for that to happen. If it didn't make it back yesterday, he, he, might, he doesn't win Angler of the Year. Wow. Actually, Kyle Welcher and Davey going out to breakfast in downtown Clayton for a while. No, that's <laughs> right not. I don't think that's I don't probably know that's happening. I don't know if it's true. Walters has been able to see Kyle Welcher the last few days within sight of him fishing, probably wondering what is up. We got her. We got her. We got started. We got started. And about 35 miles across Ooh, Lake Ontario. Double. Leave Patrick Six Walters right did. now, one of the survivors on the U.S. side of Lake Ontario, with a victory here a couple years ago. Taku Ito sitting on a five pound average as well in this tournament. He was one Tommy who came into the northern swing the last three or four events of the season in 80th or so in points, needed huge days and huge finishes. Never thought it would come to this, and he is in the Bassmaster Classic as wow. of yesterday's weigh-in. Last man in, right? I, he is. He's two or three spots up. The worst he can do is be last man in. Okay. He can fall yeah. down and still be last man in. Taku Ito fishing just outside of Henderson Bay, an area of one in years past from Brandon Pollinick. Oh, all good luck. Seven and a half pounds on day number two. Oh, okay, good one. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Why you don't like me? Every small mouth grab taku. Why? Welcome my boat. Welcome, welcome my boat. No, no. No, no. Okay, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You heard it right there, Tommy. Every smallmouth Thank loves you. Taku, loves Taku's boat. They did in 2021 on the final day. It didn't appear that that fish right there really did love it. Didn't he really was, want to come a, in. He was a bit of an outlier. He I was. would say he was. <laughs> Taku Ito fishing just outside of Henderson Bay, a notorious area here on the southeast side of Lake Ontario. A lot of fish coming and going this time of year in 25 to 30 feet of water. And Taku Ito obviously kind of lives on that U.S. side of Lake Ontario, but does a lot of different things as far as his lure choices. Very small baits, very strange baits that we have not seen on the Bassmaster Elite Series before. And nice solid morning and the wind setting up very, very good for Taku Ito today. From there, we're going to shoot back across Lake Ontario, Prince Edward Bay. See a little bit of attention in the mouth of Prince Edward Bay this mm -hmm. morning. Chris Johnston, Justin Hamner, and Patrick Walters with one big one in his live well. Again, underneath the water there from 15 out to 24 feet of water, just broken rock, isolated boulders and a lot of sand patches. Very little grass until you get near that peninsula to your left up shallower. Taku's big one weighed four pounds, 10 ounces. That's what he entered it on Bass Track. He's got a limit in the le early lead.
it's a dark one. Here we go, number two. Look right there in the tip. Ooh, just fell right out there. Patrick Walters crushed him the first half of the day yesterday, which afforded him time to look around for some new spots and beat an early retreat to the weigh-in, playing it safe because he could, because he had excelled so much and He's looking to notch his second Bassmaster Elite Series win today. We'd love to have it happen here in the St. Lawrence and Lake Ontario. Taku Ito with the early, early five in the boat, making up a five pound deficit to pull up right behind Patrick Walters. We've got much more in store. Don't go away. The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River is sponsored by Humminbird. Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Hey there, anglers. I'm Fox Weather's Kiana Lewis, and this is the Bassmaster Elite Forecast. We're looking at weather on St. Lawrence River in Clayton, New York for today. We're looking at clouds that'll give way to some sunshine. Temperatures are in the low 70s with high humidity. Good luck to everyone out there, and don't forget that you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Thanks so much, Kiana, and everyone at Fox Weather for delivering the generally good news today about all the year. weather. We got a great, yeah, yes. well, yeah, they do a great job all year. Uh, whether well, the weather's good or bad, they keep us on top of it, and boy, it's looking good today. Just getting started here into our second hour of fishing. And really, for the last three days of fishing out on Lake Ontario, it has been fantastic. After a very hostile, hostile day one back on Thursday, 30 mile per hour winds, it has been fantastic conditions. Out to Chris Johnston, live. Gotcha. Finally hooked up. First two spots were a ghost town. Just moved in here a little shallower. Sometimes they're little on the spot though, but hopefully the big ones moved in. <laughs> See what we got. One thing about Chris Johnston yesterday on semifinal Saturday, not a like lack a of four pounders. Mm. Chris Johnston's been focusing from Reeds Bay on the west side of Wolf Island all the way to the north face, Amherst, and towards Prince Edward Bay a lot yesterday. Come on. We need all five pounders today. Maybe throw in a six or two. This thing's staying right on the bottom. Must be a decent one. It's a big one. It's definitely a keeper. Might be one of those blimps. Didn't get a good look, but it's not small. Come on. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a big one. That's the right kind. Oh 
Tip of the nose. Gotcha. Get in here. Ugh. All right. Slow start, but we got a grown one. We'll take that. Maybe it'll be a little slower come today, but for all that size and bigger, we'll be rolling. Number one. He's got high standards and he is by far the most formidable angler in terms of record on this fishery. It fishes on the Bassmaster Elite Was Series, that? so that's, no. a, that's a good start right there, Absolutely. albeit late. Yeah, I got a good look at his graph right there, 21.2 feet of water. We're going to leave Chris Johnston, understand, Tommy. We are headed back to our takeoff right now, back in Clayton, New York, with your Angler of the Year winner not having the best morning, Kyle Welcher. Stand by with Kyle right now to kind of check out what's going on and what the outlook is for this morning. It's our own Davey Height. So first of all, congratulations on winning Angler of the Year yesterday. Right. This morning, things not going quite as well as they were yesterday afternoon. Tell right. us a little bit about what happened. Yeah, you know, yesterday was kind of like a storybook thing, and then today is the exact opposite. But, you know, you fished up here in this big water. You know the strain it puts on equipment, you know, and I use some of the best equipment in the world, but just multiple days of pushing it and sending it through those big water and big waves, man, it take, it's wear and tear on your, on your equipment. So a couple of mechanical issues this morning, but hopefully we get them figured out pretty quick and get back out there to the lake where them big ones live. So everybody's been watching this week. You know, you've been going a long way. Yep. With, with not much time, you know. Right. You're not, we're still standing here in the parking lot right yeah. now. Are you still going to go make that run to try to get those bigger fish or fish close? Yeah, there's there's no doubt. You know, the first day, it took me like two hours to get over there, and then in 45 minutes, I had 25.10. So, wow. I mean, that, that could happen at any time, and then I'll actually have a little bit more time to fish today, but we'll get over there, and the wind's supposed to calm down, so I think I can push it, stay out there a little bit longer today, because there is an evening bite. It seems like after 12.30 that it really starts to pick up, so maybe I can capitalize on some of that bite this evening, cut it close, and make it back to weigh in with a little bit smoother water. So, I talk about about momentum in this sport. You know it in all sports. Yep. It's, it's all about momentum. It's incredible. You just won Angler Deer yesterday. Your second place, but you're standing in the parking lot and yeah. they're catching them. Right, right now. And you still think you can win this tournament. Yeah, definitely. You know, all it takes is like this tournament right here, there's so many three and three quarters to four and a quarter fish in this lake. All it takes is a couple of those six pound smallmouth, or I've had two six and a half. Those types of bites, they only take two minutes, you know, and that's what really separates yourself. So get out there and fill a limit with some, you know, four pounders, a couple fives, and then catch one of those great big bites, and then that's how you catch one of those 27 pound bags. That's awesome. Love the confidence. Standing in the parking lot, other guys are out there. He still thinks he's going to win this thing. We're going to try. Plenty of positivity right there yes. on the part of Kyle Welcher. Why wouldn't he be? What and a positive season. We are been. not supposed to give information to any angler, but I did just text Kyle Welcher and Davey that O'Brien's pub opens at 11 oh. a.m. in case Kyle decides <laughs> oh to celebrate gosh. his angler of the victory. I, You've sounds, been there before. Well, the, <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like he's got time, but a little time on his hands here. I don't know if that'd be a great idea, though, but Kyle Welcher, there he is, one of the youngest ever to win Progressive Lead Series Angler of the Year. Closing out Brandon Cobb, who himself had a terrific season with one kind of speed bump uh, folded in there. But what a great effort. Uh, Patrick Walters, big part of the story here today. You see they're, they're in third place. Drew Cook and Julie C. Fuentes in fifth place. Yeah! Order! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS into our second hour of fishing here, the final day of the final event of the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series, this Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite on the St. Lawrence River, and one of the biggest bodies of fresh water in the world, Lake Ontario. A winner, a progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title yesterday, Kyle Welcher still waiting dockside for his boat to be repaired so he can get out here and join the fray as well. He has full confidence you, he can go out there and win this thing. We're going to get out to Chris Johnston right now, but you are supposed to win Angler of the Year. That was a very calm Kyle Welcher <laughs> for the simple fact if that would have happened yesterday, mm. he would be oh. coming apart. Any, anybody would be. Yes. 
Come on. Come on. He doesn't feel big. He's on the other side of the boat. What do we got? So weird. Yesterday they were small in here. Hopefully today they're all fives and sixes. I was there deep in that 20 to 35. Didn't mark any fish, so came in here to 15, 16. There's a few of them. I don't know how big this one is though. Little. And even though this area really from Reeds Bay all the way down to Prince Edward Point gets pressure, it's where most of your leaders, not the right kind, really eight out of the top 10 here on Championship Sunday fishing that northeast face of Lake Ontario, Tommy, even though it gets pressure, it gets a lot of pressure from Ang a great anglers we're not out of Kingston. So much less, less pressure than really Fox to Grenadier, Chameau Bay, Henderson from the U.S. side. Way more of a throttling What's that? on the U.S. side of Lake Ontario. Yeah, part of the thing is we have to remember it's only uh, 16 feet. So that's that. That's one right there. Big too. It's Kyoya Fujita who started the day in fourth place, moved up to third. Winner last week at Lake Champlain. Kyoya Fujita starting this morning really close to where Brian Smith caught his almost 30 pound stringer on day one. Just a few miles from Kingston. Other than his early five pounder, yesterday was pretty slow for Kyoya, so he may have ditched his area, which is right, you know, has been notoriously right outside the river mouth as you bust into the lake, not far from, from there. Day was day two as well. Caught almost 27 oh. pounds on that day. Good fish. Perfect conditions today. Probably going to have some of the best conditions we've had all week long. Going to have sunny skies in a few hours. And five to 10 mile per hour north winds, which are gonna help a lot of these anglers out. Yeah. Maybe four. Vegeta has the opportunity to gain three points today from his fourth place starting position. So he would, if he finishes first, he gains three full points. That would get him a one point victory in the Rookie of the Year race. He would also move from seventh in AOI to fifth. That's as high as he can go. He can go, he can finish seventh, sixth, or fifth in AOI today, which is probably an increased payday as well from seventh to fifth. Yeah, Ronnie, fifth is $24,000. Plus if he gets the Dakota, Lithium Rookie of the Year, it's another 10 grand. And if to do both of those things, he would win, which would be another 100 grand. 35,000 if he gets second. Rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series, and not sure what year he's going to win an Angler of the Year title, but it'll be <laughs> <laughs> in the near future. Mm -hmm. You would think. Shocking that he's the only rookie in our top 10 today in this wow. season when we've yes. had half of our tournaments won by rookie. How about this? We have 10 bona fide rookies in our Elite Series this year. Nine of them made the top 50 cut this week. Nine of the 10. That's the most wow. I've ever seen. We hit six, seven throughout the year. Nine of our rookies made the top 50 this week. And we, we had, had 60 seven. For, 
sure in the classic, Ronnie? We had seven who were in the classic yesterday. Two fell down. Cole Sands is uh, out right now, but if the winner is already qualified for the elite or for the classic, he will double and Cole will get in. So we could possibly have six rookies in the classic. Just got word from cameraman Jake Latondras, who was with Kyle Welcher, just launching and headed back out. So spotting the field about an hour and 20 minutes, Kyle Welcher is. Benefit to Kyle Welcher should not take him that long to get to his starting area, probably just under an hour. See, that brings in an interesting question I want to ask you, Ronnie, about how long it takes guys to get comfortable. Our northern anglers do some largemouth fishing, they go south, sometimes they have issues. Our southern guys, they go north, they got to learn it. It takes a while. It took a few years. It, it has. Walters? For Kyle, for Kyle, Patrick Walters is a good example. He is, Patrick Walters has turned into one of the best smallmouth fishermen on the Elite Series, where you could say three years ago he was not one of the best. He was. It was it, a liability. It was a liability. It was a hole in his game. He, he was leading our Y and AOY too. We went up north. Yes. And, and you. Kyle Welcher had to prove himself this year on smallmouth because of Lake St. Clair, Lake Champlain, and coming here. And he did exactly that to where, years ago, that was Kyle Welcher's hole in his game. It just, for some, it just takes longer to learn. Sometimes they go up there and spend a month or two. No, I think a lot of times, a learn. lot of times, you get wrapped up, if you've never been here, man, you get wrapped up in, in a numbers game. Hey, man, I'm on a pile of three and a half to four pounders. I'm going to do good. That gets you sent home limping if you catch three and a half to four pounders. And it's a, it's a learning experience. You have to now be on four to five pounders, period, end of story. Corey Johnson having fought back from a dismal day one with, get this, 19 pounds and 14 ounces. And he was not in not the happy. best mood and Came did not make a lot of good calls, yeah. kind of ignored the lake because of the conditions where his brother went out and caught a big stringer. Pretty fish, man. Go ahead and fish. We can see the average fish weight went up from day one almost four pounds to about four pounds, three ounces. Yesterday it was more than four pounds, wow. five and a half average, ounces. Average, average fish yesterday, wow. four pounds, five and a half ounces. Scott Martin hooked up. He caught almost 25 sure pounds on day one. It's been holding serve the next two days and made it into the ten. Scott Martin fishing out near Stony Island, where so many anglers tried to make it work a little bit. Sketch service out there. Yeah, it's way out there. Tommy, you have been out there. Stony Island, Little Galoo. Little Galoo, you bet. These uh, two and a half pounders and three pounders, they kick your butt, dude. Generally, a yeah. lot deeper well, fishing just, out there mean, than dude. we've seen on the Canadian side, oh, where they're, Scott they're Martin and Taco Ito practice. is really from 25 all the way out to 60 feet of water. Fishing a little hook, and you think you just rip, you just pull on as hard as you can. The problem is you'll rip the hook out, or you'll break your weight off. I just take my time, get him up here. He just a little two pounder. Well, we got one in the boat, at least. Okay. Definitely not one we need to weigh in. But I'm proud of every fish we catch. We'll just keep, I've had to do this every day, just build a bag. You catch a little one, and then catch another little one, and then boom, you catch a four pounder. Probably two and a half, two and a quarter. 
Martin started this week 24 and a half pounds on day one. He has 22 pounds the next two days to get in our top 10. Not so big, but cold. See the difference in that water color outside of Henderson, a lot more kind of tannic coming out of the Black River, just to the northeast mm -hmm. of Taku Edo. And just a different water color than we see up around Amherst Island yeah. on the Canadian side. Mm -hmm. Which one? No, this one. Ito hanging in there in second place. Unofficial as it stands right now. Dash track, Patrick Walters started the day with the lead. He's hanging in there as well. Koya Fujita, his mission, finish on the top. Of course, everyone's mission is that, but if he can do that, he can also have the Rookie of the Year award as well. Chris Johnston and Kyle Welcher just now getting on his way. Hi, right, y'all. Patrick Walters here. We're here at the St. Lawrence River in Clayton, New York. Um, it's been a good tournament so far. You know, caught a ton of smallmouth. Currently got 80 pounds of weight in smallmouth in three days. You know, we got a good chance at uh, catching 100 pounds tomorrow. So that's the goal. And my my approach this week is I've caught them on a couple different baits, but I've been catching them on a drop shot using the VMC tungsten drop shot weight, three eighths and a half. I've been throwing a half all week, and today I switched to a three eighths, and I think that made a, a big deal. And also the VMC. Finesse Nico, Redline Series, nano coated. The num this is the number two, perfectly for threading baits. I've also used a split shot drop shot hook, which is also in the Redline Series, a number two for nose hooking some baits. But the bread and butter has been the number two. I don't know if you can see that real well. The number two, Finesse Nico, sucker's been deadly. That's my, that's my approach. I got that rigged up on five rods right now. We're just on a drop shot. The, the main thing is just getting around them, and once you get around them, that's all you need to do. Mm, now, I love smallmouth. Tommy, you usually see the bait along with the hook and weight, but we didn't see that well, right there. Hey, I'd that's rather them not show yes. it than lie. Yes. There you yes. go. Scented, yeah, we'll good. call that's, it a yes. scented drop Part shot. Part of what works. Here yes. on uh, yeah. <laughs> gonna get out. Now, now, Tommy, we're going to get out to Patrick Walters, but we have another magic to tragic story. What? Cameraman Jake Latondras, who's been with Kyle Welcher, they were all fixed, or so we thought went about a mile and mechanical issues again oh. for Kyle Welcher. So it has been a mm. rough championship Sunday morning for your Angler of the Year winner. Did they say once they made it a mile, were they able to underpower, make it back with those power? Or are they trolling back? Like, that know? I don't okay. know. Okay. Okay. They, but here's what I do know. They are not running out to the lake right now. Yeah. Yeah. Rough day after three pure magic days. That's good and bad. You thought like it was a small one. Is he able to take a loner boat? Is in the rules, I believe you yeah, can. Yeah, correct? if number three, yeah, then. if the angler, like, that is obviously not fishing in the top right, ten, feel big. wipes their waypoints, so there's no like, okay. assistance there. You there can, ain't none you of those guys go. wiping their waypoints. No. Well, <laughs> right. that's what Lee Livesey and Matt Robertson did last year for Bob Downey when they right. sent the boat out. Three and a half. Little bit slower this morning for Patrick Walters. And taking a look at Kenna Kamura, fishing 20 feet of water right around Amherst Island. There you go. Had a little bit slower day two, but a big stringer doing. yesterday. Biggest key, throwing a Nico rig worm, and he said absolutely dead sticking it, oh, yeah, not moving is. it almost for a minute. Wow. Key to catching that big stringer yesterday. 
Biggest fish of the tournament, was it, for him yesterday? Seven pounder, our fish. Yeah, seven pounder. Big bass of One the, of the of biggest fans. all time here. Uh, it may be the second biggest single bass we've seen here. I don't, I don't rem recall another seven uh, plus other than Paul Mueller's, Paul Mueller's seven thirteen. Yeah, that's the only other one that I that was recall. Like six seven ounces from the New York record. Very small, isolated rock pile in twenty feet of water. A lot of current that sweeps around Amherst Island up towards Kingston on the north side of the mouth of the St. Lawrence River. One small one, and that looks bigger. It's about four. I think he's four. But not big enough yet. I gotta have at least 25 and a half to break the century. <laughs> I hope he's gonna be a small one today. Yeah, I almost have to let him set. Let them set for a while. Chill out for a little bit. Yeah, because they're waiting until we go off. There's no doubt he is yeah, our guy to. this year on the Bassmaster oh, Elite yeah, Series. You better watch out for him, Bassmaster Classic on Grand Lake. Yeah, no doubt about that. Yes. We've got a star-studded top 10 here on Championship Sunday at the St. Lawrence River. We have three Japanese anglers, two Canadians, and then five other anglers in our top 10 that honestly have great careers either in the past or ahead of them. It's a bright future for our top 10. I wanted to go through a couple accolades from our top three anglers so far in the tournament, Patrick Walters, Kyle Welcher, and Chris Johnston. A little bit of different flair for each of them and why it's so, they've been so dominant in their careers. Domination at, at Bodies of Water, we've talked about Lee Livesey at Lake Fork with a couple wins there. Brandon Cobb at Lake Hartwell is so strong. Uh, you could do Brian Schmidt at Lake Champlain has been very stellar. But Chris Johnston at the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario, absolutely phenomenal. He has fished five Elite Series events here since 2019. One every single year, four total days of competition each of those events so that equals 20 days of fishing he has never once been outside the top 10 after a single day of competition including today he's obviously in the top 10 that's as far as he can fall today if he were to not be in the top three but let's go a little farther with domination because today is not finished we're not counting it yet it's only 19 completed days he has finished 14 of the 19 days on this water at the top level of our sport in the top three of the standing. So not only has he made the top 10 every day of competition, including today, he has made the top three in 14 out of 19. It could possibly be 15 out of 20 with a top three today. Now when we look at our day three leader, Patrick Walters, finishing most likely third in Angler of the Year today. He could slip down to fourth behind Drew Cook if he falls to the lower half of our top 10. But looking at his career after coming out of the University of South Carolina. He had won college championships. He had won Bassmaster College Regionals. He made it through the Opens after winning two of those as well. Getting to the Elite Series, his Angler of the Year finishes. Like Such said, honestly, he has led more of the season in his worst AOI than any other year. He led AOI for half the season, ended up finishing 16th after the Northern Swing. Other than that, third, fourth, fifth, and third currently going to the final day of the season. Patrick Walters has had a stellar five years to start his career. Meanwhile, the same type of deal four years into his career for Kyle Welcher. 2023 Angler of the Year. We crowned him yesterday. Obviously, he's having some mechanical issues today, but Looking back in his season and his career so far, he has had two of his four years on the Elite Series in the top 10 of Angler of the Year. One of those was his rookie year, and then obviously winning Angler of the Year this year. Those are his two top 10s in the points race. Got second in the 2022 Classic. That was a big milestone opportunity for him. He was tied for the lead with Jason Christie going out the final day. Christie edging them in what was one of the closest classics of all time with three anglers within 11 ounces. And then obviously splashed into the Elite Series on day two of his career at the St. John's River, catching that 10 pound one ouncer. We will never forget that catch. We all got exposed to Kyle Welcher in that day, in that moment. He had a top 10 at the St. John's River to start his career. From there, Tommy, it's just been high expectations ever since. But those three guys at the top of our leaderboard, absolute domination in their own ways. 
I don't know what stat was more impressive, the Chris Johnston or the Patrick Walters. <laughs> uh, that was unbelievable to look at yeah, that. That's so strong. So Chris Johnston does not fall under not the home lake curse in any way. No. 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 And, and, and really, the and Tommy, you know this, with Chris and Corey Johnston, <laughs> a second place here is an epic failure oh, to them. Oh, that is yeah, how they there. treat it. Yeah. Chris, obviously the 2020 champion here. Corey has finished second, I believe, multiple times. Chris has finished second as well. And they're both fishing in our top 10 today. Z, Corey, you were there for little Corey's worst finish. I was, I witnessed Corey's worst finish and he more than likely should have won that tournament. And AOI. Mechanical, it, oh, right, he should have won oh, Angler of the Year. And it was one of those situations that you hear with the Johnstons. He had about 22 pounds in the live well with mechanical issues and said, I got to catch another five pounder and ran out into the lake and didn't make, make it back to weigh in on time. So. Yeah, well, the, bo the borrowed boat that he had to help his mechanical issues had the wrong time zone for his graph when they reset it. And so he was he thought he was he was cruising back to weigh in early and he was actually late. I still have that picture that we took of him on the water where the we actually got to hear this from Kenna Kamara. His trolling motor fell off of the boat. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Serious out there for sure. Serious business. Patrick Walters still in the lead right now. Started the day with the lead. Taku Ito has moved up into second place. Yoya Fujita in there. Chris Johnston. And Kenta Kamura has got two in the boat, a three and a four. Kyle Welcher, remind you again, is uh, still experiencing some mechanical issues and is not out there yet, not fishing yet. Tonight, the NFL is back on Fox in the final week of the preseason as the Texans take on the Saints. Don't miss any of the action. Tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox. Tommy watching a little preseason last night. Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson connection with the Jets. Yeah. That looks for real. Oh, people were wondering. Yeah. Looking, looking real to you. Okay. Look, look pretty spot on to be honest. Would you study those preseason? I, I do. As a Bears fan, I, how happy are you that he's not in the NFC North? I'm just, I would be much happier if he wasn't in the NFL, but the Bears <laughs> fans. Jeez. To be honest, going to get out to. He has been a nightmare. <laughs> Scott Martin live. There we go. Maybe. Wow. That's number one. Woo! That's a good one. That's a good one. I don't want to catch 50. I just want to catch five like this today. Dude, that's over five. Big old thick thing, dude. That is a thicken. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Thank you, Lord. What a fight. Got him up to the top, dude. He went all the way to the bottom in 30 feet of water. Couldn't slow him down. Oh, yeah. It's like a five. I don't even know, dude. Five. Just put him in his five, five. Five, five. Oh. Scott Martin, definitely Thank the you, senior Ooh. member of our top 10 out there today with so much experience, but one experience he's always wanting to encounter is a chance to win the Bassmaster Classic. Everything's about a goal, right? And, and, and I'm hoping I can achieve the goals that I've set forward here on the elites. They're, they're, they're stiff goals, they're, they're tough goals. I mean, uh, to win an elite event is not easy. To win an Angler of the Year is extremely hard. Uh, and then to possibly win the Bassmasters Classic is the ultimate. You know, there's been a, a lot of people that have fished the Bassmasters Classic over the years, but very few have won it, very few. And, uh, and that's my goal. Needs a fifth place finish today. He started the day in 10th, can only move up, but has to get to fifth place if he wants to make the Bassmaster Classic. If he gets to fifth, he is in. He is in. Wow. Because he ties three or four anglers and has the tiebreaker over all of them. Last one went in as a 5-5 for Scott Martin. He'll need five of them at least because he started about six pounds back of the fifth place angler. Okay. Okay. Okay, you notice days like this, we got to see it on 
day two of this tournament when there are light winds oh. and high skies, and we're going to have that today. That is when Taku Ito really, really oh, is dangerous no, 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 on Lake no, 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 Ontario. No. It's shallow. Dangerous. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Small one. Feeding. Good one right there from Taku Ito, self-proclaimed terrified of ghosts. What? He is. He's taught to actually talked about it with his cameraman Brian Evey quite a bit yesterday on Bassmaster Live. Ghosts it is or not goats? Ghosts. Goats. Okay. Hobgoblins, Halloween, anything <laughs> of that right. nature. Back to Koya Fujita Live. But goats too. You were talking about this business of not getting hung up catching numbers. Numbers. Uh, yes. Koya Fujita in the interview in yesterday, game. he yeah. said, I'm not, I'm not swinging on him till I know I think it's a big one. And we have seen that all year with him. He does not big numbers, but definitely the especially this tournament, the quality there for Fujita and Oh good fish. Oh good fish. Wow. I Ronnie, I know the viewers on FS1 like to see all the lures the anglers are using. You said you were going to try to get some. I actually got Fujita. some. Did yeah. you really? I did. No, I got them from Craig Lamb, who got, got it from yeah. Fujita this morning. He took some photos. Yeah. What a big one, Fujita. Yeah. Oh, about five pound. Maybe five and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Big fish. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and even yeah. though we don't know the exact depth, but we know that area that Fujita is fishing, same as Bryant Smith, the general quarter mile range of where that giant stringer came from, about 17 to 25 feet of water. A lot of current there. I'm gonna head back in the mouth of Henderson Bay. Taku Ito. Taku down in third place now, just replaced in second by Fujita. Okay. Small one. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Not so big. A lot of work with a drop shot. Also a Nico rigged worm, but very, very, very small, small baits. Two inch baits, some of them. Some of the worms he's been drop shotting, stuff that we have never seen on the Bassmaster Elite okay. Series. A 
Yamaku Ito worked hard to <laughs> gain the Elite Series in 2020, and since then he has been a fan favorite. All his skills, all his tremendous enthusiasm for the game, and his biggest moment was 2021 right here. Snowmas can speak Japanese. Yes! What? Haku time! I'm Takumi Ito. So, I'm from Japan. Since a child, I learned to bass fishing, bank fishing, so no boat fishing. Junior high school, started the watching Bassmaster. So, my dream is a U.S. tournament. Looks like six pounder, dude! My first time U.S. tournament is uh, maybe two years ago. They love Taku. What? My boss is a small mass Disneyland. Wow. Maybe 105 pounder. Oh, big bass, big stage. Big dream, bass master. presentation of BASS. Hope you're having a great Sunday morning. We are into the third hour of fishing here. Final day of fishing of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series with the Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River and Massive Lake, Ontario, TH Marine. Weather watch there, current conditions, 60 degrees. Cloudy with a north wind at five miles an hour. Those are pretty good conditions right there. It hasn't been four days of slick glass like we saw July of last year, but pretty darn close for an August tournament. Three out the of weather. four. Oh my yes. goodness. Yeah, good, good stuff generally. Up to Chris Johnston started this day in third place. About three pounds back to start. Come on, bite it again. There he goes. I don't think it's a giant. And pretty no, much all of your anglers in a really broad stroke, except for Scott Martin. The majority of them fishing in 15 to 22 feet of water outside of really major yeah. spawning bays where they spawned about a month ago, month and a half ago out on Lake Ontario. Always the latest ones to spawn usually. Kind of lazy. Three pounds. Got it that time. And about a quarter mile west of Chris Johnston. Back over to Patrick Walters. And we do understand Kyle Welcher is Such said during the commercial break, about halfway out to Prince Edward Bay. So he is definitely up and running as of now. Kyle Welcher just crowned yesterday as the President Bassmaster Angler of the Year, if you're just joining us. Also positioned in second place to start the day, so. Uh, Upside still left for him in this season. This season, which is down to its last six hours. Now. Hey, little guy. It's fine, but ain't much to him. That one bumped any. <laughs> Trying to recatch number five. Smaller average so far for Patrick Walters and 
out in the bigger water right now with Corey Johnston. Talking about AOI, Tommy. A little guy. What Kyle Welcher did to seal it this week is no, nothing short of impressive. The fact that Patrick Walters is third in AOI and leading this event means if 30th place finish for Welcher, 35, 30th, 5th place finish. He's he's not AOI, so he could have caught him and still lost AOI this week because of what Cobb and what Walters have done. Need to find that one that was with him. Talked about this earlier in the tournament, really, and that stat that you got to show up there, Ronnie, was amazing with Chris Johnston, but what these guys have done on this body of water, and I've said this time and time again, they have made something that is so hard to repeat over and over, day after day, look so easy in some of the worst conditions we have seen on Bassmaster Live. I mean, today is a dream fishing day compared to times that we have been in the boat with Corey Johnston and Chris. But their consistency here is, it's amazing because they always seem to just avoid a landmine. Whether it's like something you see with Kyle Welcher, a mechanical issue, they always seem to avoid that. How they pull so hard. This one isn't even that big. Nice one. I'll say that. I think we're going to try to show a picture of one day where Corey did hit one of those <laughs> landmines out there. Well, yeah. Put some perspective Diesel. into what St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario can do to your equipment. Especially because a viewer wanted us to go Still through all the different changes we've had to U.S. and Canada in play, the just the river, just the lake, you know, all these different things. But for half of our time that we've gone to, or over half of our time we've been at the St. Lawrence in past years, we've taken off from Waddington, New York, which is another 80, 80 miles, miles farther. So that's just 80 more minutes, 80 more miles of wear and tear possibilities. Yes. Yeah. Yes, going out of Clayton is always fantastic just because you're only 15 miles to Cape Vincent which is the mouth of Lake Ontario. You do solid day today. Yeah, no doubt about it. Trying to relocate the entrance to Smallmouth Disneyland. And your VMC on point. Solid morning for Taku Ito. It's been a little up and down so far on Lake Ontario for Taku. It's all kind of relative, but Taku Ito with a big day two stringer, getting it done early today, fishing a little deeper than the rest of your leaders here. Ooh. Championship Sunday. Fishing the U.S. side just outside of Henderson Bay. 25 to 30 feet of water. Very, very small scented finesse baits has been the key. Taku Ito told us. VMC on point right around 18 pounds unofficially right now. With a lot of room to grow. Yet again here on Lake Ontario. Taku Ito, your VMC on point. Championship Sunday. Got a couple of fours. In the live well for Taco. None of the fives that all these ten know they're going to have to have some or all of 
in order to take the win here today. But look at that, 97 pounds, 12 ounces. Almost. One of the conversations we're going to have today is the that. century mark. I can't wait. The century mark, how many are going to get there today? Will anyone get there? I think certainly we're going to have some anglers get there today. But stay tuned because they're getting closer and closer. It's still early. Yeah! Buzzler! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome back to the last event of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series season, the Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River. It has been a fantastic week so far, and there's more fishing in store. But before we finish out the year, we got to show you how we got here. Starting the year down at Lake Okeechobee, a legendary body of water, Mike Sukon, and it is a place where we saw something different than we expected for our champion. Power event was looking for food. He's, he's catching crappie, and he found a big bass in the river, which we never catch fish up there, and he ended up winning from that spot. First ever Elite Series win for Tyler Rivette. Then we go to Lake Seminole where we saw a rookie cowboy, Joey Safuentes, dominate Lake Seminole. He did so fishing in an area that not many other people fished, surprisingly. And he was our second first time winner of the year and our first winner Keep for a rookie. out of the trees. Big comeback here. Then we go to Lake Murray in South Carolina after the Bassmaster Classic, and we had a guy who was leading most of the event, Drew Benton, slip down to 10th place on the final day, moves all the way back up to the top and wins with the biggest bag of the tournament. Then we go stay in the state of South Carolina over to the low country, Santee Cooper, a big bass factory, and Luke Palmer figured it out better than all the rest. Big bag, 96 pounds, 14 ounces, almost got to 100. Another first time winner on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Then we go to Lay Lake in Alabama, our fifth stop of the season. And we saw another rookie yet again have some dramatics on the final day to win on his home body of water. Will Davis, one of the most seasoned anglers on Lay Lake, one of the most veterans on this body of water. But he took down some of the biggest names in the sport to win his first Elite Series title. Two Another victory rookie. over Palnick and Christie was right there. Our closest victory since 2011 season. We go to Sabine River and a guy, Mike Sukon, we have had our eye on. He needed to get an Elite Series win. He had five second place finishes and Brock Mosley did it on a place that he has had so much success. We had him as the best guy never to win and he broke through finally. Former college angler at the University of Ole Miss gets his first Elite Series victory. What a great story that was. Then, no, this isn't a replay. This is a totally different part of the world. Joey Sefuentes, though, winning his second Elite Series event of his rookie season. Two of the first seven events belong to Joey Sefuentes, and he does so with the biggest weight in Lake St. Clair history for the Elite Series, 91 plus pounds. The rookies didn't stop there, Mike Sukon. We go to New York for the next to last event of the season, and Keoya Fujita takes the title of Lake Champlain. What a dominant performance leading day two, three, and four for this young Japanese angler who came to America with a goal in mind. He achieved that goal tremendously. The rookies have half of our elite victories. Let's see if it happens again. Another, a couple rookies are in the mix as well this week. Bryant Smith, Cooper Gallant. Yoyo Fujita and Joey Fuentes aren't far behind either. Can we have another rookie winner this week? We will find out later this weekend, but make sure you tune in to see the action as it unfolds the way and we'll be here at 3 p.m. Eastern time to see Dave Mercer lead out the best in the world as they end their season on one of the best bodies of water we have ever seen, the St. Lawrence River. Well, no doubt a great season, but there's one element missing, one element that we always like to see out here, and that's oh. one of those things right there, a century belt. Jay Shakurek was the first Bassmaster angler to ever achieve the century mark with 100 pounds of smallmouth. Along with him, Corey Johnston got one as well here. We're still looking for our first century belt this season. Been a couple of places where it was possible. Did not come to pass, but uh, man, oh man, it's looking for all the world. Like, one. uh, well, one's almost guaranteed here. Yeah. That's for sure. Five years ago, you never thought you would ever see in a four-day tournament 100 pounds of smallmouth bass. and. Almost scary to say it's almost commonplace when we come to the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario. We're going to get out with your unofficial right now trying to scratch down that 100 pound mark. Patrick Walters about 35 miles into Lake Ontario just west.
have Justin Hamner from Alabama and Chris Johnson. And here's to show you how much of a local Chris Johnston is. As the crow flies from where he's fishing right there, he's only about 71 miles from his house in Peterborough, oh, Ontario. Wow. That's Walter Just came in today needing 19 pounds, 10 ounces to hit 100. Well, Tommy, and as rough as we have seen this lake, I do not know it's even on a calm day that I'd want to be in a pontoon boat ever. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> on, on, Any, like anything that can serve as a wing is yeah. not going to serve you well. If you are out there in a pontoon, you need to pick your battles. About two and a quarter pounds shy. He's got a two pounder, so a four and a quarter will give it to him. I promise you that pontoon was not out there on Thursday of competition. <laughs> Definitely call that two pound, that little bitty one we just had down to there. And, and it really is as much time as Kyle Welcher lost with mechanical <laughs> issues this morning. Door is still open, even though he's almost 20 pounds, right at 20 pounds behind Patrick Walters. That is, that is doable here in four casts. Yeah, well, the good thing was I knew which, which side he was on. Thank goodness. That was definitely the quickest call, especially of yesterday. <laughs> Look at them all on the screen. I'm gonna catch one more here, and if they're not big, we're gonna run. Is it a four? I don't know if it's a four or not. No, little. <sighs> Three something. Johnston. It's a slow start. But getting some really small ones, one good one. Let's see what we got here. I'm in a little shallow right now and it's hard because there's a lot of small ones in here. Every once in a while you can get a good one. We need a five. We need a five. Come on. Let's see what we got here. Not a big one. Three pound. Come on. Another that is a three. size bass we have not seen very often this week on Lake mm -hmm. Ontario. They gotta get bigger. That's four. In the show so far, that area of Lake Ontario, back over to Patrick Walters, about a mile and a half from Chris Johnston. Here we go. He needs one pound call to get over 100.
not big, but definitely call that little two pounder out. He's right at three, I think. Two ten is our smallest. Right at three pounds again. Dang. Concentrated on around Prince Edward Bay, 15 to about 24 feet of water. Patrick Walters telling us his opinion. They're a lot shallower in this area, way less pressure. We cracked to it, where we ain't got Scott Martin and much. Taku Ito are fishing. A lot deeper. That's a little guy, but I think that was 100. I got 20 pounds right at it. So now I can go fish free. Now I can go catch five pounders. Stop messing around with these little ones. He did 19.10. He says he's over 100. If that's if that's 100, he's the, mm -hmm. the first angler to do all smallmouth, all largemouth, wow. I believe, for yeah, Central Club. At least yes. I, I'd, have to, I'd have to check them. Well, I mean, I guess they would be forever. Yeah. yeah. Corey and Jay haven't yeah. done it, and yeah. That's his third belt, too. Remember his first one at yes. four when he yeah, won by 29 pounds? Koya Vachita right there. You're right, he is not wrapped up in a numbers game, but quality definitely there for Fujita. Will not cast unless he locates one that he thinks is, is worthy. Does not mess with them. Mm -mm. There is not a we lot of play in them. Boy. Yeah, his uh, his landing time is yes. half of that of the, the average, the field's average. Oh, maybe some cool. big small man. today to get his second Bassmaster Elite Series win if things really turn on for him. He could also win Rookie of the Year. That's the way it stands right now. He's going to have to win in order to overtake Joey C. Fuentes, who has had two wins already on the season here. That's how strong the rookie competition has been during the course of this season. Brian Smith, California. Big, big fireworks on day one here as well. We'll be right back. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is coming to the biggest season opener college football has seen in years as his Colorado Buffaloes face national powerhouse TCU. Big noon Saturday on Fox starts this week. <sighs> That's a little bit better than one. Time flies when you're having fun. It's it's an amazing opportunity to be able to live this dream. And uh, it was the first bass tournament I ever fished. It was on Lake Murray in Columbia, South Carolina. Everything about that day I can still remember. Like everybody cranking up those old two strokes motors, the smell of it, just like, oh my God, like it was, we're going fishing and we get to go blast off. So we're like, we're in a boat race. I mean, like this is America. Being able to fish for a living, people are like, what do you do for a living? It's like, I, I fish. And they're like, what else do you do? It's like, well, I actually, I fish and bass allows that. They provide for you. It's bass master is there for you. Um, and being able to fish for a living and travel around, you can't complain. And I'm glad we're ending up north because I want to end on some smallmouth. Again, Patrick oh, yeah. Walters in search of his first victory since 2020 up there in Lake Fork. He had such an overwhelming performance record uh -oh. setting. Uh-oh. How about a speeder boat's big fish Wait, alert? Now. Patrick Walters. Hold on. 
century built. How about that? 100 pounds, six ounces. Oh, as Gail and Neville Snotes told us from Raising Arizona, so many smallmouth and so little time. That's exactly Tommy right. Sanders. That's Big congrats. Patrick Walters, very popular on the Bassmaster Elite Series, already holds century belt fishing for largemouth, but he would be angler number three in the history of the Bassmaster Elite Series to hit that century mark. Unbelievable young angler, and boy, the angler of the year stat that you threw up on the screen of knowledge, Ronnie, unbelievable how consistent Patrick Walters has been throughout his Bassmaster Elite Series career. Big congrats to the angler from South Carolina. Still in his 20s, still oh. in his 20s. Little bit elusive, doesn't quite tell us everything he's doing. That's part of his game. Have a lot of fun with that. He just rolls out information selectively. <laughs> right, That's right, yeah. Information that I'm not sure is true all the time, but we love That's having fun with Patrick Walters. That would manager. be his third century belt, the two at fork. Tying uh, Aaron Martins, Steve Kennedy, Mike Iaconelli with three. Just get it over with. I mean, he was too—he was too ferocious. Seven. Calm down, buddy. And as we saw yesterday, that sun peeking out is when. Lake Ontar Ontario was absolutely on fire. Yeah, we got a two three fives. He's probably the same exact size. This dude's got a. Thank you. Goals checked off for today. Make it into the Century Club. It's a view from Chris Johnston's boat. I believe that's Justin Hamner. Yeah. Just inside of Chris Johnston. A lot of folks asked why that sunlight so critical. You're dealing with a sight Ooh. feeder. Be the one chasing them. It's real clear water of Lake Ontario when that here. sun popped yesterday. It was absolutely big incredible one. late in the day. Almost quarter to 10. Due for a big one off this spot. These ones were super hard to get to bite. Hopefully they're big old smart ones. For the most part in this tournament, been drop shotting a small three inch swim bait style drop shot bait. Little paddle tail on it. I know a win is foremost, but he needs 22 pounds today to hit the 100 Doesn't pound weight. Got one five pounder go, in the live geez. well. The rest of them are we not got. what he wants. Come on up. I don't think it's a giant. Definitely gonna help us though. Solid one right there. There's a couple around them, so they're hard to get to bite. Let's see what this one weighs. 
How big? Almost four and three quarters. Two. That's five. All right, let's get another one. Let's get his friend. There he is. Sitting down there waiting. It's another big one. Right under a boat. Come on. I need this one. We change our day around in a hurry. Right under the motor. Got him. That's awesome. This could be a good one. Come on, be a big one. So we'll turn our day around in a hurry. Come on. Be the right one. Oh, come on. It's heavy. It's heavy. Could be another good one. They usually travel together, the big ones. This was its other pair. Come on. I need ya. And it's a four. Don't jump. Maybe a four and a half. About the size of the other one. Come on. Come on. Get in the boat. This is where you just have to let the rod and the drag do the work. You can't horse them. I'm using like a size two Gamagatsu Air Martin's drop shot hook. It's just tiny. And you can't put a ton of pressure on them. Come on. Come on. Ah, he's not as big as the last one. Not as big. We'll take them out. Probably a four. Well, this is far from over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll go down to the last hour. <laughs> that uh, time dwelling down there in the fourth and fifth place area is over for Chris Johnston, at least for now. He himself closing in on a 100 pound limit of smallmouth bass. Fujita, Ito, and Kimura, it's been that order right under the top two for a good while right now. And, you know, man, plenty of fishing time left here on this final day of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We'll step away for a moment and come right back.
No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome into our on location coverage, a cozy spot along the shores of the St. Lawrence River in Clayton, New York. My favorite day of the week, Championship Sunday, the final day of the tournament. Ten anglers remain. We have already decided who our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year is. We've got to figure out Rookie of the Year. We've got to th figure out the winner of this tournament. But Davey Heights, Stone Cold Kyle Welcher, living up to his nickname, got that done yesterday. It's been remarkably calm from day one of this tournament. Now, in a tournament where people try to be safe, he said there is no safety. The safety's off. He's got no pressure on him today, but it's not going well. Yeah, it's really not. And we gave him credit coming into this event, not playing it safe. The first day when we had the most wins of the week, he made a long run, about 45 or 50 miles. He said, I've got to go there to have a chance to win this tournament. And if I win this tournament, I know I'll also win Angler of the Year. It worked out great for him until this morning, and then he only got about a mile away from the takeoff dock and had some issues as part of our game. But just imagine that had that happened any other day this week, it probably cost him. Definitely if it had happened day one or day two. But even yesterday, it could have cost him the Angler of the Year title. And, and that's not fair, but it is part of our game that makes it so interesting. I've been corresponding with Jake on his boat, his camera person, and he he said, I can't believe how calm he is. He said, you know, he's obviously frustrated, but still feels 100% we're going to get to the fish and we are going to win this tournament. Yeah, it, it amazed me. He, he really did feel like that. And I, I said, you know, momentum is a big thing. We talk about that all the time. But he truly felt like if I can just get there, I've still got four hours and I can catch 25, 26 pounds in four hours. He truly thinks that. Let's. Hope he gets there, and I think he's well on his way now, but uh, we'll we'll see, and I, I wouldn't put it past him. He's had a phenomenal year. And a special shout-out to Justin Atkins, who has literally been on the water, towed him back, been back on the water. Now he's all the way over in Kingston, yeah. <laughs> switching boats with him, making sure he's on the water, and that's things you don't see in any other sport. Something we had not seen until a few years ago as a Canadian Elite Series champion, and this is the first, Chris Johnston. Got him. Both him and his brother in the cut, obviously. Be a big one. It's a good one. Oh, and it was hard to catch. Let's get him in the boat. Come on. Don't do it. Uh oh. No. 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 Oh, it's a good one. He looked at that thing. It must have been 30 seconds. He bumped it twice. Come here, buddy. Yeah, that's what we're after. Solid piece there. Give me some. That's a good one. How big is that sucker? That's a good one. As predicted, our top 10 getting a picture perfect day. Yeah to fish on this body of water. Yeah, we've been talking about all week. The sun's supposed to come out. The smallmouth are really going to turn on. It really hasn't been the best conditions, but we do have that here this afternoon. Way, there's a little bit of bounce and throws the scale off. But. Stop it. Just under four and three. Call it a four and three quarters. Just not very shocking, but championship Sunday off to a great start for Chris Johnston. And equally as impressive as his week is the fact that yesterday his brother in the top 10 went to all the B spots and weighed 25 pounds. But this will look at how his day is going on championship Sunday. Yeah, he got started off good today, just like he has every day. Speaking of his brother, he had a slow start on day one, but was able to come in with 20 pounds, 19, almost 20 pounds to save the day. And it's done well since then, but you're right. The, the problem with the Johnson brothers is they're so good here, but when all of a sudden one gets all the, the A game stuff, 
uh, lookout. And Chris Johnson has had that the last two days. I talked to Corey again this morning. He said, yeah, I'm going to go fish some totally different stuff. Uh, but Chris Johnson, now that he has free run of all, all that they've learned here for so many years on the water, uh, look out this afternoon. But Patrick Walters is, is doing really good holding them off right now. Patrick Walters, obviously a two-time Century Club member. Unofficially, a three-time Century Club member right now. And the question isn't whether we'll see that, it's how many of those we will see. And the guy who would love to join the Century Club with Smallmouth Bass had a big day yesterday. Bassmaster Open winner from Japan, Kenta Kamira. He feels good. He feels better. Come on, don't jump. Yeah, not that good, but better than my other one. Kita does already have his five fish limit in the boat. We heard him mention there that this fish will help him. It's bigger than the smallest one at three pounds. I don't know. I thought it was bigger. No, no, no. Might help him a little. Kenta, one of the anglers fishing a little shallower than most of our field. We, I think we'll see that uh, later today as it, the sun has it, doesn't look like it's out quite as good where he is compared to where we are sitting here, Dave. Really like to get up on those shallower areas when the sun comes out. Kenta has had a good championship Sunday and it's great to have him here for, I believe his third championship Sunday of 2023 campaign. And here's a look at his day so far. Yeah, like I mentioned, Dave, he, he's fishing a relatively shallow compared to some of these other anglers on day one and day two. We saw a lot of the anglers fishing probably 30 to 45 feet deep, catching a lot of those fish, but that has kind of gone away. There was a lot of those fish caught like that day one and day two, but it seems like most of the anglers we have here on Championship Sunday are fishing, let's say, 14 to about 25 feet deep or so and Kenta Kamura, one of those fishing that shallower 14 to 16 feet deep. Uh, in this clear water, you can actually see the bottom. You know that a lot of our viewers don't, but here on the St. Lawrence River, you can see the bottom when you have the sun out and in that depth. So really keen on light sandy spots and dark spots mixed in where those smallmouth like to use that as ambush points. Kenta Kamira, a serious competitor, both in the Elite Series and the Bassmaster Opens. But I gotta be honest, there's one guy that I just can't stop thinking about, and that is our reigning and defending progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Stone Cold Kyle Welcher. How many times <laughs> he's been to service trucks, service crews, boats have been in and out of the water, but guess what? He still took time to catch a fish. I believe this fish literally yes. is in the middle of the river when he's waiting to get picked up yeah so it is uh and, and we need to talk about that a little bit i think when things are going your way and we've already talked about it a little bit momentum is everything he was waiting on somebody to bring him some fuses he stopped right in the middle of the river right where he lost power and i ah, may as well fish here catches a two and a half pounder in the middle of the river <laughs> Absolutely amazing. He's going to catch him when he gets to his spot. It's happening. I, I'm telling you, he's going to smash him. It's it's. Yeah, and and he was talking about even when when he was having those issues this morning. I got to at least get out there and get that century belt. And this it means a lot to a lot of these guys to to be able to break a hundred pounds, especially on smallmouth bass. Here's a guy who has a couple of century belts, but this morning said. I want one of those brown century belts. I want to get one with smallmouth bass. Both of his largemouth tournaments. And both on fork, correct? Yes. Yes. And both uh, 
both those events that Jerk made was a big, big player yeah. for him. I think there's two things going on that he wants to prove to the world. I can catch brown fish and I can catch fish on something other than a jerk bait. And we all knew, you know, that's been around him for years. But uh, he's much more versatile than just a jerk bait fisherman at, at Lake Fork. That's for sure. And I can't tell you how impressive it is to see how he shark sharpened the weak knife in his drawer. I mean, this... And it, I mean, you've, Davey, you've been around this sport a long time. You will hear a lot of times Southern anglers say, ah, small mouth, I'll just get enough points. He identified early on and said, hey, I'm going to have to deal with these things for my entire yeah. career. And whether he wins this or not, he's invested a lot of time, and that investment's paying off. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And he's a much better smallmouth fisherman than he was just a few years ago. Keep in mind, he has won four Bassmaster events. Not one with brown fish yet, like he said this morning, but he's not even 30 years old. You think about the success he's had at every level, high school, college, and opens the Bassmaster Elites now. He's a guy that has been consistently in the top 10 angler of the year race. He's going to win one of those trophies just like we saw Kyle Welcher hold up over his head yesterday. And soon. Yes. I mean, yes. he is primed. But the only thing he can't do is is grow a mustache. I mean, that <laughs> disheveled mess that he gives some credit go for his smallmouth success. He said it's the smallie stash, but he has made it clear that he's not allowed to come cool. home with it. It is staying in the north. Reminiscent of a wet gremlin. He has two century belts, and unofficially, he has number three right now, and that has to be your power pull replay of the day, Davey Height. Absolutely, when we hear that music, you know it's coming, and to catch 100 pounds of smallmouth in four days was unheard of until last year, and Bass has been coming to the St. Lawrence River for a long, long time. But after last year, you kind of start thinking, well, can it happen again? Might it, will it happen again? we got a chance for several people to do it, but Patrick Walters is our power pole replay today because he's the first one unofficially to get to that mark, over 100 pounds of smallmouth. Some said it would never happen. It couldn't happen. Well, obviously, it happened twice last year, and unofficially, it's happened once here today. The question is, how many century belts are we going to have from this tournament, Davey Height? I was thinking that we could do four, but with Kyle Welcher having some issues, I'm going to say safely three. Don't doubt Stone Cold <laughs> Kyle Welcher. He's just playing with his food. Lots more to come from the Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River. The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River is sponsored by... Ranger Boats. Yamaha. Toyota. And by Dakota Lithium. Yes. You know, by reading Bassmaster magazine, by watching, you know, the Bassmaster Elite Series television show. A lot of the stuff in that magazine we hadn't heard of yet in Canada. To be able to flip through that magazine, apply something right. out on the lake was actually really cool. Yeah, baby. Woo! I was always saying to my parents, you know, I want to fish the Bassmaster Elite Series, especially watching the Bassmaster Classic every year. Then it was unheard of for a Canadian to, to make a living fishing. He's a four-time Canadian Open champion. When I walk up on stage, it's definitely a childhood dream. From learning from the magazine to teaching in the magazine. The Johnson brothers have come a long way from a small town in southern Ontario, Peterborough, Ontario. The guy who's traveled a little bit further than that is, of course, the prince of Japanese angling, making his fifth Elite Series cut out of nine events. 
trying to chase down his very first Dakota, or his only chance at Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year, has to win this event. Kyoya Fujita. It's really incredible. The season he's had. This is his fifth top ten, and his, he's got to actually win today to win Rookie of the Year. It's amazing. Just a testament to the season that Joey Sequentes has had. Because Kyoya would certainly be deserving. I mean, five cuts. Yeah. That's an angler of the year season generally. It, it is. And, and, you know, when you say cuts, it's, it's you know, because a lot of guys call cuts top 50 because it's just $10,000 for 50th place. But, but you're referring to five top 10 cuts yeah. is... Absolutely incredible in his first year on the Elite Series. And probably, I'm going to say six or seven of the events he'd never been on the water before, on those bodies of water. Yeah. It's not like, it's amazing, <laughs> really. Because some of our rookies are just rookies to the, well, they're all rookies to the Bassmaster Elite Series, but maybe they've been fishing the Opens for a number of years and they've been to a lot of these fisheries, mm -hmm. but he has not. This is, you know, new fisheries. Because he only fished one year in the Opens. Yeah. Yeah, wait, look out when he figures this out. <laughs> yeah. When he gets the hang of things. <laughs> Made all three cuts in the north. Yeah. Amazing. And I've, I've watched him close. You know, I watch all of the anglers close. But he's he's the real deal. I mean, I don't, certainly don't have to tell the viewers that. But he is. He Everything he does is thought out. He's very good at landing these smallmouth bass when they get beside the boat. He doesn't take very long to get his hand on that fish and get it in the boat. One day short of a week from now, or since now, or what, whatever the right adjective or way to say that is, Davey, that's when he took the title at Lake Champlain, obviously an event that got pushed into a championship Monday. And um, as I said yesterday, he took his trophy and said, I need to get to the St. Lawrence River and start pre-fishing right away. And that pre-fishing has paid off, making all three cuts in the north but atop our Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year leaderboard, Joey Cifuentes. The Cowboy is sidelined yes. and watching it all go down, hoping. Yeah, he, you know, his chances are good, obviously, because Goya has to win today to make up that deficit there to gain three points. He started out this morning in fourth place. It's going to be very tough to do, but you certainly can't count him out. Had a great season. You know, you look on down the list, uh, Bryant Smith. Coop Gallant, they have all had some great season, a great rookie class. Back out in the water live with Kyoya Fujita as he tries to chase down the cowboy, Joey Sefuentes. Truly the greatest rookie class in Elite Series history. And it's hard to sit here and say things could get better this afternoon. We've been saying that all week. How does it get much better than we've seen? 228 pound stringers weighed in and 129, so. Multiple 27s. Yeah, and the conditions are better today. And you look at our limits so far today. I mean, nobody's caught over 21. 2114 is our biggest bag, and that's Chris Johnson right now. I mean, you, you know, there's a lot of fish in it. Yeah, you? absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if it's because of the last event of the season or we really are. 
kind of building a relationship. Kioya showed me not only three baits, the main baits that he was using this morning, but showed me the packages that they come in that I'm going to try to have to order a few. Maybe I'm going to fish a few days here when the <laughs> anglers are done. Kuya Fujita doing with that fish, taking every care to make sure it's healthy and makes it back here like most of the fish have this week. Incredible live release success once again by our AFCO Yamaha live release boats atop the leaderboard. Patrick Walters unofficially has achieved his third century belt, but they're all trying to chase him down. And Davey Height. It does feel like it's going to get better. It, it certainly does. I'm going to say at least four century belts. It's going to be a big afternoon. Minkota Bassmaster Elite. Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Clayton, New York has been a great host for our final stop of 2023. And where are we? We're at the Antique Boat Museum. We've got to thank him for allowing us to use this facility and this afternoon's weigh-in as every single day of this event's weigh-ins have been is going to be exciting. Let's see how many century belts we have. Two Canadians in the top 10. Going to be a sea of Canadians are going to show up here. But everybody trying to fend off Patrick Walters right now, our day three leader. We've had a new leader every single day of this event. Will we have another one on day four? Right now, your Yeti hot seat belongs to Patrick Walters. And this morning at takeoff, Takumi Ito, when he made no bones about it, he wants that chair. He said, I, I sat in it. It's very comfortable. I am taking it. Yeah. I heard him say that this morning. He said, I am taking the Yeti hot seat away from Patrick Walters. Oh, I want to <laughs> sit on the Yeti hot seat. Hit it on the fall. I don't think he's big though. Little. Get up here. And we're gonna try and catch your friends. Fish. Yeah. You know, we haven't even seen but a handful of fish that small being caught here this week. Every every fish seems like it's three pounds or more and needs to be in the five pound class to really matter to these top ten anglers. Where did they go? Chris Johnson, obviously the first Canadian ever to oh, win yeah. a Bassmaster Elite Series event. Got it done here. Corey took a win in the Opens two years ago in this body of water and a second place finish here earlier this year yeah. to Jody White. Two box with both brothers. Corey hooked up. I mean, Not a real might as well just give us a two box and th they'll both be hooked up side by side eventually yeah. here. You see, Corey fishing much shallower than his brother Chris. He told me that this morning. I get the shallow stuff today. Chris gets all the deeper good stuff. But he said, uh, you know, if things go right, I think I could catch a really big bag there, especially with the forecast of sun coming out this afternoon. You know, there's certainly some five and six pounders that roam around up shallow. I think this is the first elite event we've had the Johnsons in that we didn't see them doing at least a little bit of sight fishing. Some yeah. fish still, and it's a little later, I'm sure that's the reason, but uh, a lot of people thought, well, they're just great sight fishermen you know, up there. But that's not the case here this week.
speaking of sight fishing, they're not spawning, but as he's fighting this fish, you just watch his eyes. Scanning. He is looking everywhere, all around for the next target, the next victim. His head's on a swivel. Doesn't even look right when you look. He's 13 pounds, three ounces behind the leader. <laughs> Corey, when Corey sees that graphic, he will not be happy. <laughs> no, because it doesn't happen very often to Corey, especially here. As predicted all week long, we kept saying if you can make it to the top 10, the conditions will be perfect. And a look at our TH Marine current conditions, currently 60 degrees. It says cloudy, but it's definitely breaking up here. North wind at five miles per hour. And that is about as perfect as it gets for this body of water. It really is, uh, especially if you came up here from from down south and, and it feels so much better. Just just pleasant to be out here on a you know, on the shores of the river. But this morning when I walked out of the hotel, you could that north wind just changes everything. Just a, a little brisk oh, air. And right it's not a strong north wind. It's not it's gonna off. make it difficult for these anglers, I don't think. Five. Kyle Welcher being so positive, having the little delay this morning said, hey, the run will be smoother going over a couple hours later in the morning. And it has calmed down. That a limit fish for Corey Johnston. Well, let's have a look at how his morning has gone as he rotates through plan B. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, Corey Johnson, brother Chris Johnson, are both in the top 10, and Chris has got a better chance to win this event. So they have talked like they always do, and Chris is going to fish to places where they feel like he has a, that better chance because he was closer to the leader. But Corey Johnson, don't count him out just because he's got plan B going on, like you mentioned. He's a great shallow water fisherman. Get down there, get that. And uh, he was pretty optimistic, and, and he was another angler this morning. He said, I want to be sure I get a century belt. I mean, that was on his mind this morning also. Well, I mean, he's got to stay ahead of his brother in something. Yes. His brother doesn't have a century belt, but his brother's on pace for a century belt. And Corey wants to make sure he has two. Just a testament to how much they love to fish. He fished two weeks in a row. He's got a wife and young kids. He's going to keep fishing tomorrow and Tuesday. They love fishing tournaments, but they just love fishing for these smallmouth bass. Good one here. Yeah, I mean, there's honestly not a day that they're not fishing. I mean, they, they are truly, you hear people use the term a fishing family, an outdoors family. They, their family, like when I make the jokes on stage about these little kids that are draped around them both are going to be, I have no doubt that one or multiple of them will be on the Elite Series in the future. I mean, they're that kind of, Maybe. even when they're just home, like they'll yeah. fish for oh, two, yeah. three hours yeah. at bare minimum just to take he, the kids out for a little while. He told me this morning, because I was like, you don't want to go fishing tomorrow because we plan to go some this week. But I said, you don't want to go tomorrow. You want a break? He said, no, we'll go. And my five-year-old will be on the back deck, and he'll cry when we have to leave tomorrow after eight hours on the water. That's how much that family loves to fish. Well, what does that remind me of? Their dad, when they had a kid sitting on the back, Lynn Johnson used to compete, and Chris and Corey out there had the exact same personality. And that personality has made them some of the best smallmouth bass anglers on the planet. But still trying to chase down Patrick Walters, who's trying to officially win his third century belt. Yeah! Order! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Welcome back to our on location coverage. Beautiful Clayton, New York, the host of our final 
Elite Series event of 2023, the Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River. We started with 102 anglers, 50 went out yesterday, and only 10 remain. All 10 of them have the exact same goal, and that's to hold the ninth Elite Series title of 2023. And at this point in the tournament, a four-time Bassmaster winner is in control of that lead, and that's Patrick Walters. Yeah, take a look there at the maps. He's been fishing around Kyle Welcher all week, and we see that Kyle Welcher has made it there. So good for him. When I say fishing around, they're in the same bay. They are miles apart. I don't mean literally like right around, but in the same general area. You know, watching Patrick Walters try to land this fish is, it's truly amazing. You look at his history and his age, his youth, he's got a lot of fishing ahead of him on the Bassmaster Elite Series. If he wins here today, five victories before he's 30 years old. Wow. That would be amazing. Not many Three people could say that belts. in the history. Yeah of our sport. I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody with any more wins of that before they're 30 years old in the history of bass. With regards to his oh century God. belt, unofficially he's achieved that today. He weighs those fish in today and that becomes official. He goes into a two-way tie with Steve Kennedy for the most, as far as an active Elite Series pro, for having the most century cool, belts. <laughs> And he's not 30 years old. Right. And he hasn't been fishing the elites since 2006 like Steve Kennedy has. I mean, you just think about the short period of time, how young he is, how diverse he is. You know, he won those other belts down south. And to do it up here, and it's not over, a lot of fishing left, but to, if he's able to get a century belt and a win here today, man, what a, what a start to a young career. An incredible start, but an incredible season. Yeah. Uh, not just for Patrick Walters, but for the Bassmaster Elite Series. I mean, it just you look at how dominant the rookies have been this season to win four out of eight titles to this point. And we have a rookie in the mix here today that, that could make it five. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be the takeaway from this season, the year of the rookies. Yeah, definitely the, the highlight of, you know, if you think about this 2023 season the rookies have really really shown out but our sport our, and our sport has always changed and yeah. there is change in our sport you look back at the pictures you look back at bassmaster magazine from years ago everything looks different than it did but in this past year with these rookies i see the the fishermen and the fishing changing more than i ever have since i've been keeping up with bass for 40 years i mean it's you you see so many 20 couple year old anglers that are having great success that you did not see that even 10 years ago rookies come ready now yes there's no you a couple of years to get your feet under you don't have a couple of years anymore and um i would say you know this is kind of our rookie season doing this together on fs1 it's been a lot of fun this season but we still got a crown of champion here today and a whole We're bunch of Canadians are heading across the border hoping to see yeah, this yeah. guy yeah. hoist the title. Because remember when he won here last time? Nobody was allowed to even come oh, to the weigh-in. Right. 2020. Bottom, come on, be the right one. Oh, it's heavy. It's heavy. This could be a good one. Staying down just like yesterday, that six-pounder. Come on. My little guy told me I have to catch him a six pounder and say it's for him, so hopefully this is it. Speak we were just talking about Come Corey's on. son a minute ago. Chris had his don't, son don't. in his lap literally this morning. And you could tell he was like not having a great morning and I said, ah, he needs a 
Don't a cup of coffee or something, you know, at four or five years old. Got a he's like, no, nah, he's look upset cute. because he can't go on the boat ride. He wanted to go with his dad this morning. He was very upset that he could. Got to look at Chris's graph there for just a minute and. They really target, and they have so many spots. They target individual boulders, uh, and he and Corey Can't tell must have can. thousands of them. Most anglers come here looking for and hope they can get a handful of good you know, rocks, little nah, clumps of rocks or individual boulders. But this that's really what they fish here more than anything. Come on. All his fish, three pounds, definitely looks bigger than three pounds. You're not that big, come on. Mm -hmm. It's not even a four. Ugh. It's gotta be said though. You gotta get the pliers to get it. The Johnson brothers' dominance on this body of water is incredible. You, you, look at Patrick Walters, our tournament leader as of this morning. He said on stage yesterday, my worst Dream tournament all year was my home pond. Yep. I mean, we see that happen all the time. We've never come here, and they yeah. didn't play. They don't always win, but they're always a factor. So I had some great tournaments on my home lake, Lake Murray in South Carolina, Bassmaster events, and some well, other. An ounce or two of but then I had a couple of bad ones, too. You're right. They they never have a bad event here. Maybe a single day that they would consider bad, like Corey the first day. It wasn't bad, though. But they are mad at themselves if they're not in the top five here which is unheard of. I mean, if you think about it, nobody is that consistent every time you go to their home ward. Nobody. Nobody. It literally in the history of the sport. Yeah. I mean, they got to keep it going. Time yeah. will tell. But uh, Chris Johnson, I mean, one thing that would make him mad is if he doesn't join the Century Club today. I, I know that he's got to be driving to do that. And that music sounds like he is our power pole replay of the day. Absolutely, Dave Mercer. Power pole replay today. Chris Johnson has officially, unofficially, because it isn't official until they bring him to the scales to you and LT. But but we're going to go ahead and call it power pole replay of day because Chris Johnson has what will be when he brings him to the scales over 100 pounds of smallmouth. He has caught that in four days, and, and that is an accomplishment of a, of a career. It really is. Something people said would never happen. Well, not only did it happen twice last year, but look at right there. We've already got two, and it's not even noon yet, Davey. Hi, to give you an opportunity. You said four. Do we have a chance of more, or are we sticking with four? I'm going to stick with four, which will be absolutely incredible. Just one more record that we will break here on the St. Lawrence River. Four century belts. I'm saying five. I mean, wow. I know he's down there. I know Stone Cold Kyle Welcher is in the bottom, but there is no way. He's not getting 21 pounds of bass today. I believe in him, and I believe in you. Yeah! Order! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. On we roll toward the thrilling conclusion of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series, the final day of competition right here on the St. Lawrence River, Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite on the St. Lawrence. That is our leaderboard as it stands right now. Chris Johnston. Ontario, Ooh. Canada, certainly one of the favorites coming in here, has overtaken Patrick Walters, who started the day with the lead. We have them both unofficially under, excuse me, officially over the century mark of 100 pounds. Yes. So why don't we update everyone who's uh, joining us just now on this Sunday morning with our Yamaha Midday Report in oh, Arizona. That was a beautiful, beautiful aerial right there, drone <laughs> shot from Wes Miller of a... By, Large mouth bay on St. Lawrence River that used to matter. Well, it doesn't in this tournament. You better be out in Lake Ontario. Taku Ito trying to win a second title here fishing Lake Ontario. 
And the interesting thing is Taku Ito trying to do it on the U.S. side, an area that has so much pressure. Mouth of Shimo Bay, mouth of Henderson Bay, this time around. 25 to 30 feet of water, very small lures that Ron Moore is going to show at the screen of knowledge in a little bit. Lures that we've not seen before on the Bassmaster Elite Want to Series. See him. But Taku Ito catching very, very pressured bass and getting it done this time around in the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario. Taku started right on the button, 75 pounds, and he is closing in on that 100-pound mark himself with plenty of time to get it done. Our champion from last week at Lake Champlain. Yeah, what an impressive angler, a rookie, Koya Fujita. Yeah, and yet again, what we don't know is anything yeah. that Koya Fujita is throwing, but we can give you a ballpark yeah. depth just because our camera boat driver told us. Yeah. <laughs> Fishing really from about 18 out to 25 feet of water, it appears, just outside of the city of Kingston, Ontario. Moved from the mouth of the river near Cape Vincent, not catching as many bass as some of the other leaders but the quality definitely there for Koya Fujita. Yet again, coming off of a victory at Lake Champlain last week. Four four-pounders in his boat and one five-pounder. He's going to have to trade some of those fours for fives before he gets done today. And how about Chris Johnston on everyone's list? Always the favorite coming in here for the past five years since he has been on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And a little bit of a slow start today, but gaining ground quickly. It's all relative with a slow start with this guy, Chris Johnston. Probably more knowledge than anybody else in the field, except for his brother, Corey Johnston. But Corey giving him a little bit of room, not coming in on the juice with his brother that Chris Johnston's been on. Fishing about 17 to call it 23 feet of water with a drop shot, very small paddle tail swim bait, but it's actually a drop shot bait. Can't really get into that, but a lot of our viewers know. But that right there was the first bass we have seen in this event on a tube lure, a lure people used to oh, use yeah, that's for like, smallmouth bass. Throw, it's there, throwback it? Sunday with the tube there. But the one thing to really watch with Chris Johnston is we're starting to see clearing skies, and that should actually make the fishing, hard to say this, even better this afternoon. The man who started the day with the lead, Patrick Walters, looking for his second Bassmaster Elite Series win. Terrific, terrific tournament over the first three days. Very consistent. It started out with a five pounder today. Exactly. Then it got a little bit slow for Patrick Walters, but let me read some weights off. Thursday's weight, 24 14. That's when we had all the southeast wind, 27 3 on day two. And yesterday in this area, 28 5. His weights have gone up every single day, throwing a scented drop shot worm. Just like Chris Johnston, 17 to 23 feet of water, but still room to grow today for Patrick Walters. But we already have him over 100 pounds for this event unofficially. Smashed him the first half of the day yesterday, had afforded himself the time to seek out some new spots and also to get back early. I don't know if he's going to have that luxury today or if he would even take advantage of it. Exactly right. That is your Yamaha Midday Report. We're going to get back to the Henderson Bay area where Brandon Polinick won just around that peninsula years ago with Taku Ito hooked up live. Everywhere, fish everywhere. This tournament has pretty much been dominated from Reeds Bay, Amherst Island, all the way to Prince Edward Point on the north side of Lake Ontario. Taku Ito completely ignoring that, fishing the U.S. side. It would be really interesting to see if he could pull this off. Oh. 
every cast bite too much work too much work to reeling them in Tommy God, that was a delicious problem to have on yep. championship Sunday yep. but fun a good one right there for Taku Ito. Five pounder? <laughs> many, many five pounder. Crazy. Now I can sew the five same size. One pound. Really? One pound? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that and another upgrade of similar uh, dimension will get him into the Century Club as well. Speaking of century belts, there's one of two anglers who were the first to achieve that with small mouth. That was last year right here. St. Lawrence River, Corey Johnston. Yeah, exactly right. And boy, if not for a little slip up on day number one, this event, Corey yes. Johnston would definitely be on pace for that. This is back last year, calm conditions every single day. Mixing it up between deep and shallow throughout the event, which we'd have seen a little more shallow water fishing this time around, but a lot of those Five to six pounders out in 20 to 40 feet of water this time of year. I'm going to get out with Corey Johnston live right now. At the time last yeah. year. Hey, we're shallow now. Go on, boy. At the time last year, his 28-8 bag on the final day was the second largest in bass history. We have now knocked that down one notch to the third biggest smallmouth bag in BASS history. No, it's not the same fish. different fish and to put in the terms if you come to a Bassmaster Elite Series <coughs> event and beat this guy or his brother on this body of water you have done something I was listening to Dave and Davey talk about it there was a giant and the scary thing fishing with. Oh God, there's another one. They're all over here. Oh boy. No wonder. God, fishing with like Corey and Chris. Five of them. Oh my God, they're loaded. <laughs> oh my God. Is they are equally as. Dude, there's so many bass right Powerful here. in this depth of water in five to seven feet here as they are in 20 to 60. Can you see that? Look at them all swimming around it. You see them all? Look at those big black ones. See them all right behind it? Oh yeah, look right behind that bass. And if Corey is seeing those, he is fixing to really hurt them the next ready. 60 minutes on Bassmaster Live. Just stay back this way. Stay back, they're all in front of me. Corey knows he can call out everything in his live well in, in a matter of five casts if he can do it quickly. Yeah, we're going to have to keep our eye on him the next hour. Said if it got. There's a bunch of them. If it got sunny. It's got to find them again. They're hard to see. That shallow water bite, historically, that's when it happens. Well, I was fighting them there. There's so many fish, I was reaching the live well. 
and my small one threw them out so I can get right back in here. Just gotta find them again. Oh, it's fun going shallow for a few minutes. Oh, that's a great <laughs> bunch of them. I remember when we used to do that. It is lit up out there now, man. Boned up. Yeah. Perfect summer day. Bunch of them and some big ones. See, while he's looking around, always head on a swivel for Corey Johnston, then he'll fire out that little hair jig. Oh, there he is. Oh boy, Rick and Giant. Really, by about this time yesterday, Patrick Walters was done. He had already had well over 27 pounds by this time yesterday morning. Yes, finally. Whew. Finally, but man, they're biting so weird. Finally, a better one. This is the right size. Yes. That'll definitely put us in the gentry club. <sighs> Finally a good one, dude. That took forever, did it not? If he beats his one of his lake fork marks of 104 pounds, 12 ounces, he will jump into the top 30 biggest bags ever and would definitely beat out last year's top century clubs on all smallmouth. If you're shopping around for a place to go bass fishing, I think <laughs> we're seeing a good advertisement for this incredible place right here in upstate New York. 101 pounds, Patrick Walters and Chris Johnson right, right together, just in a statistical tie, really, since these are estimated weights. Taku Ito, Kyoya Fujita, both of those guys certainly within reach of the 100-pound mark as well. And Corey Johnston appears to be on them, too. We'll be right back. Yeah! Hustler! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Season started more than half a year ago down in wow. South Florida, Lake Okeechobee. Eight events later, we arrived here in New York for number nine. Actually, we were in New York last week for number eight here on Lake Champlain. But this is it, the big finale on the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario. And we have got a potential of a whole bunch of guys above 100 pounds. But there's, a, there's our marathon peak performance as it stands right now, our two who have reached that mark today. No doubt about it. It almost seems like one of those tournaments, whatever one of these two anglers, Chris Johnston or Patrick Walters, catches the biggest bag today, it just feels like whoever catches a giant stringer out of those two anglers is going to hold the trophy, even though it is cumulative weight. Your marathon peak performance, unofficially two century belts, over 100 pounds of smallmouth bass, and a lot of prime bite window day to go here on Championship Sunday. That is your marathon peak performance. We're going to get out with Chris Johnston right now. And it, even though Chris Johnston and Corey Johnston, very roguishness behavior between each That's other, okay. playful and <laughs> yeah, not malicious, the interesting thing is how they work, especially on this body of water, where whatever one's leading, the other one Come will on totally floor. get away from the other, you know what I'm saying? Like you see Corey giving him a lot of room right now, and it helps when you split winning. Yeah, if you can get a winner, <laughs> right. it really helps if you split. 
Well, early in the Elite Series time, the first few years when we saw them managing areas together, we were saying something's got to give. If you're both in the top five fishing the same the stuff, the, the chances of both of you having a shot to win are lower. Someone's going to have to give way after day two or three, and we've seen that. And then obviously someone will have mechanical or just a lower day in general. This week it was Corey on day one. Well, it'd be bit bittersweet if Corey lost this tournament, but his brother won and they split the win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's a four pounder. Nope, they work very, very well together. Whatever one knows on this body of water or anywhere else on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the other brother knows. It is a whole lot nicer fighting them on a heavier rod. And the Johnston Z are the, the best at catching smallmouth in tournament action, but I think the way they practice and knowing wind is a huge thing. Wow, yet another fish on Championship Sunday on a tube lure. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No. it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a Ned Rig. Ah. Not a bad one. He's going to upgrade. Friend's still down there. He is. Let's see what we got here. Boy, if you are not keeping that bass, you are mm -hmm. you're sitting good. Four and three quarters. Okay. Well, as Chris makes a call that will only cement his Century Club status even more so on Championship Sunday. Now he's looking to get his second title here. As we bring it into the Dakota Lithium screen of knowledge, I want to go over a couple of those top lures. Z, you were talking about drop shots being a big factor, different types of plastics on it, Ned rigs for Chris Johnson showing up today, and a tube. Uh, there's a couple different ways that anglers have gone about it this week. Our day two leader and our angler of the year winner, Kyle Welcher, he started the day in second place today, has had some mechanical issues, lost a good chunk of his day just trying to make it to his area. He did catch a two and a half to two and three quarter fit pound fish let it go though because that's by far the smallest fish that he has caught this week not going to be able to help him to win so only looking for five big ones with his limited fishing time using a scented drop shot worm that we know well we've seen a lot of anglers go from nose hooking a drop shot with their drop shot hook to threading it through the small soft plastic a lot of that helps for one make the bait last longer and sometimes gets a better hookup ratio on those small mouth he's been operating the same area prince Edward Island region um, for most of the tournament. Then we go over to Taku Ito, the guy who won here in 2021, had a huge final day that year to win, gave this photo to Mark Zona of the, of the lures he was using this week. And one big thing I noticed is how small they are. You can see his index finger there kind of as a measure of very small, skinny, tiny lures. Got him rigged a couple different ways. He's got a, a small crawl lure on a drop shot as well. He's got the very, very thin lure on a drop shot. And then he's got a Nico rig, which was an underrated factor in his 2021 win here. Just different presentations for similar soft plastics for Taku Ito. Looking for his small mount Disneyland today. A guy who found the biggest five bass limit of all small mouth in BASS history. It happened on day one, Bryant Smith. He is not in our top 10 today, but we wanted to cover, you know, a monumental bag of fish and how it was caught. Caught it on a Strike King half shell. Uh, very, very natural translucent color in this clear water up at the St. Lawrence River. For him, it was his first northern swing. First few days on the St. Lawrence River ever. Found a great area, caught that huge bag. Never really got to relocate that school of fish the last two days as he slid down the standings a little bit. But for your Bass Pro Shops top lures, that's a couple different approaches that we've seen this week to success. We've seen all kinds of drop shots play. Pick your poison, scented drop shot lures, non-scented, whatever you want. But it seems scented is the goal and the, and the deal for everyone. Chris's last fish was put in as a 413, gives, giving him a one ounce advantage on Patrick Walters. Just under five. Those two are five. Okay. We got, the cent we got the century mark. Now we need the win. 
between the we're in Corey Johnson's, but I know I heard Chris yeah, in the yeah. background, <laughs> and he's about ten miles. We're away. all hearing voices <laughs> here now. They do have a sixth sense about themselves. That's how you sight fish right there. Freaking swallowed. Beautiful fish. Johnson started the day in seventh place. He has now moved up into fifth. He is, he's on a trajectory to get there, Mark Zona. Yeah, and the scary thing is, this is kind of your backup areas because you can't be near your brother. Y'all got some <laughs> fishing spots on Lake Ontario. Corey Johnston starting right outside of the river mouth, the St. Lawrence River, just outside of Cape Vincent, on the Canadian side, really from about 14 all the way out to 25 feet of water. But we're really seeing transpire here in the last hour with the presence of that sunlight. And we should have that the rest of the day. A lot of those shallow fish. Not a big player in this tournament with a lot of the cloud cover that we had the first three days. But that is not the case now. Corey Johnston with a good limit in his live well earlier today fishing out deep. But he has locked into a shallow water bay, a spawning bay, well-known spawning bay. Out on Lake Ontario. Got him. Already with a big limit in his boat. We're going to get out with Corey Johnston live. Good day so far, Corey Johnston. You were saying yesterday their knowledge yeah. extends not only to both knowing the spots, but the actual rock. rocks. No, and that is where very the true. fish are on those rocks. Yes. Smallmouth are a lot like homing pigeons, and I know that sounds nuts, but they you've seen it here. <laughs> they will use the same rock year after year, and they, after they spawn, especially when they're shallow, they'll stay up there till fall. That's why it's even cooler, not just at this body of water, but if you do get to track smallmouth migrations and track, like we did St. Clair, we had that conservation initiative to implant some trackers into fish and be able to track them, but we also took them from certain anglers in different regions of St. Clair, so we can see if they go back to that. Right. They're released in an area, see if they go back to that region and we can correlate that. So Gene Gillen and our conservation crew with bass doing some cool efforts up north to hopefully make us learn even more about these fish. Yeah, and the one thing, you know, what really hampered this the first two days, guys that were trying to make this happen shallow, they don't hunt as well without sunlight. You saw guys like Kenta Kamara that made it work with some big ones, but your numbers go down. You could not ask for better conditions though right now than we have for Corey Johnston. That's what I don't like right there. When they see you catch them. Let me actually put that in perspective. Corey Johnston doesn't like a boat within five <laughs> to 50 miles of him. He'll help. Corey's problem now with his brother Chris having 24 pounds, he needs about 30 pounds to take over the lead. I dare him to do it. Yeah. 
If, if there's a guy that could do it, <laughs> I dare him to do it. Good candidate right there, Corey Johnston. Yeah, ha ha. Getting things on the move, headed in the right direction. Started in seventh, now up to fifth place. Kyle Welcher still waiting for him to ignite, though he had a lot of issues. It took him a long, long time to get out to his fishing spot. Our current reigning progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. We'll keep following his story throughout today. Chris Johnston, though, the man on top by one ounce ahead of Patrick Walters here on the final day of the year. Tonight, the NFL is back on Fox in the final week of the preseason as the Texans take on the Saints. Don't miss any of the action tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox. That is exciting. Going to have some starters first quarter of that. And the interesting first game of the year next week. Kansas City Chiefs. Detroit Lions yep, that'll be said a good nobody one. ever for the first game. <laughs> That's awesome. It'll be a good fire up. And Kansas. Meanwhile, on Lake Ontario, adjacent to St. Lawrence River, but mostly Lake Ontario, we have got the final day in action here. 102 anglers started here. They've been through it all season long. We're down to 10 on the last day of the year. And, and really looking at that map, here's what's amazing. Uh, about that. That is a big, vast area on the northeast side of Lake Ontario. We are seeing 100 pound stringers near each other, and we are seeing them 40 miles away. That is what is staggering. Um, started out slow. First couple spots were ghost town, and uh, then I went to kind of a spot where I've caught small ones, got a five, and uh, I haven't caught as many three and four pound fish, which I'm okay with, but and not as many bites, but better quality today. Got two fives. I'm looking at some right now. These ones are really hard to get to bite, but there's been many six pounders caught on this spot. And uh, what was I saying? Sorry, I'm distracted. Come on, buddy. So I've got two fives, and then I think a couple four and three quarters, and a four and a half is my small one. So I think to have a shot at winning this thing, I'm gonna need to, come on, fish. Get a six and a couple five and a half. So I'm not happy with what we got, but we got the century mark. But when we come to the St. Lawrence River, I'm not happy with a top 10. Most places, like, okay, I have a shot at winning it, came close, and just happy to make the top 10, but this place is special to me. And I feel like most people expect me to win here too, so there's extra pressure. And it's... <laughs> I got, so I got both my boys here, um, Beckett and Bowden. They're three and six, and it would be pretty special to have them here, my parents here, a bunch of friends and family all came down to support me. Um, yeah, it'd be like almost like winning my first one again because the first one, there was no one here. It was during COVID, so it just didn't have the same effect. But to win this one, and it's a slug fest, and on my home pond, it'd be pretty cool. My little guy's been putting some pressure on me, saying I gotta catch some, some six pounders, so I'm trying. There's a good chance I'm looking at some right now on my graph, and they are being stubborn. These are educated fish. These fish aren't like what they used to be. Five years ago, I could come out here. Oh, well, that one's going to look at it. Here we go. Every fish I throw at, I pretty well catch. You come out to a group of 10, you'd catch five of them. Now you get a group of 10, you maybe catch one. And that's just, they're getting pressured. Um, you know, it's been a it's been an okay year. Um, wasn't, wasn't wasn't the best year. Um, struggled down south, surprisingly. Picked it up up north. Um, had a good northern swing. Um, no complaints. It was a 
overall it was a pretty decent year. Um, made some different decisions this year that I normally don't make. Um, I thought he caught it. Um, and it's been, I've had a good week this week. I've had an amazing week. I've caught a bunch of fish, caught some really big ones. Um, today's been a little bit slower. These fish are being pretty picky for some reason. I don't really know why. Um, I mean, I got them dancing on it. Um, they're just having commitment issues right now. And I've had some good bites. They've just nipped at it. But, um, you know, we're just trying to nickel and dime. We got 21 something pounds today. We broke the century mark um, with smallmouth. That was the main goal today. Second goal was, you know, catch a big bag and try to win this tournament. And I think we're three bites away from doing that. So uh, we got us a good chance. We're in contention. That's all we can ask for. Um, and just try to keep catching them. Uh, these boys are going to catch them. It's the St. Lawrence River Lake on where most of us, I'd be surprised if anybody's in the river today. But um, it's going to put out. They live here. They catch them every single day. You just got to be the one that catches them a little bit better. And I know some people already got some probably good weight. That's why we just, we got all day long. We just need to catch three more good ones. But they're basically right now just running away. I mean, they're being very weird. Having a bad year is all relative. He's third place <laughs> exactly. yeah. of the yeah. year. He did yeah. finish 75th on his home lake, though, Santee Cooper. Yeah, That's probably weird. what he's talking yeah. about. That was weird, yeah. All right, Kyle Welch. This is a real this is live right now. All kinds of difficulty getting out here today. He's underway. Okay. He is in fellow Elite Series Pro's boat, Justin Atkins. Thanks, Howard. I didn't bring no scissors. Briefed the tournament director Lisa Talmadge to make sure that was fine. Yeah. All the protocols, and now that's number one for Kyle Welcher. I found some. Maybe I did find some. They ain't quite as stout as my Sunline scissors, but they'll do. I think so. Welcher really hasn't had less than 25 pounds on any day, so that one is definitely below the average, but at least it's a start for him now. There it is, right there. A lot like the style Patrick Walters plays with. He has gambled, really gambled in this tournament. Does not fish for checks. That dude fishes tournaments to win, and I think you will see him hold a lot more than that Angler of the Year trophy in the future. But wrapping up the Angler of the Year title yesterday afternoon, Kyle Welcher. Kyle Welcher is one of the guys that we've kept an eye on all year long as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studios. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, and we're talking a little bit about our top 10 and how they're arranged when it comes to Rapala, Bassmaster, Fantasy Fishing, and Mercury Drain the Lake. Two different game modes that we have for Fantasy. One of them is goes by buckets, and that's based on your Angler of the Year placement. Bucket A is obviously the top 20 in Angler of the Year, 21 through 40 for Bucket B, 41 through 60, so on until you get to the 102 Angler field to occupy all five buckets. And when we think about some of the big performers for that, you wouldn't necessarily think Patrick Walters would be somebody in bucket A that you would go to, but he has shined big time this event. He has fixed all of his smallmouth problems. That, that has been the liability in his game, holding him back as we head up north, costed him possibly one, maybe two Angler of the Years throughout his five-year career. But for the most part, he has been flawless this season on smallmouth. A great bucket A pick. Meanwhile, Kiyoya Fujita, Bassmaster Elite Series rookie, he's also in bucket A along with Kyle Welcher in our top 10 today. So those, were, those guys were high picks in bucket A. Bucket B was really the bucket everyone was hard pressed to pick. You had both Johnston brothers in there. You had Brandon Polinick in that bucket. You had 
Kenta Kamira show up in that bucket as well. And he has been points wise the best angler in this bucket. Catching that seven pounder yesterday will be big bass of the tournament. That is some bonus points to his point total. Obviously, he is in the top five to seven throughout Bass Track today. He'll end up with good points, but I did go with Chris Johnson. That's really the hard decision is Chris or Corey when you're choosing. They were both in the same bucket. Chris was my pick and came into the day in third place in the event. Scott Martin was one of two anglers in bucket C. Bucket C is the fringe of just outside the Classic or just inside the Classic. He was way outside, needed a win for the most part coming into this event, ended up the points sh shifted down just a little bit. He needs a fifth place finish or better today to make the Bassmaster Classic, but a great pickup for him. If you used him in Mercury Drain the Lake earlier in the year at his home lake Okeechobee, you maybe are a little bit more disappointed if you saved him for the end, a top 10 to end the season. And then Bucket D, we had Matty Wong jump in there. Bucket D is a peculiar place. It is a place where guys are just outside of requalifying for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the top 70 out of our 102. In in the points race are guaranteed next season. If you're below that, you have to rely on average. Maddie knew my average wasn't good enough. I have to be top 70 in points. He did that by making the top 10, and he is going to have one of his best Elite Series finishes and oh, continue man, on man. next year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. What'd you put as your winning weight, Ronnie? Well, I had to stick with what we thought we we didn't see we we thought we wouldn't see a century Itty club belt bitty. this year so i put 98 and change so i'm wrong and that's fine this is good you better hook it we short on time but i still ain't keeping it ain't keeping a two pounder here Exactly. Yeah, scary. It's so easy to have things go. So easy. Well, Chris Johnson on top of the leaderboard. Tommy gets some mic issues worked out. Chris Johnson, Patrick Walters, they're over 100. Mark Zona, Taku Ito, Kyoya Fujita right. right behind there. Who knows what Corey Johnson will stumble on. We'll be right back. Bassmaster Live here, Championship Sunday. Nailed it. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is coming to the biggest season opener college football has seen in years as his Colorado Buffaloes face national powerhouse TCU. Big Noon Saturday on Fox starts this week. It's Almost like Absolutely. We're going to get back out to Prince Edward Bay with Kyle Welcher. Rough morning on the mechanical issues for your Angler of the Year champion. Tommy, as you tell me, that's a big bird watching area. I've spent many hours out there, had no idea. Oh, yeah. I will take some of that in the next your, time I'm out there. Take your spot and scope. I will. I found one. Found a big one. Finally found one. And it ain't no baby. It ain't no great biggin'. He came up in a wave out there and I was like, biggin', but it ain't. First one we've thrown at. It's not a bad sign. It's crazy how this point looks so consistent. And then I get to a waypoint, which is where I've caught them in the past, and there's fish there. But there's like nothing special about it, as far as I can tell. Come on. Maybe it's bigger than I think. Oh, yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, it's a nice one. That's a nice one. Okay, okay. 
I'm ready to be done if you are. We can just call a truce on all this fighting stuff. Well, just a different you demeanor a with Hal Welcher today than any oh other God. day we've covered him. Oh, it'll do that to you. It'll be winning the angle yeah. of the year. Life is all good. We ain't got long to do it today. But we might do it. Take four more just like that. One. Just like him. He's got to be a four pounder at least. Oh, yeah. Four, one, four, two. Yep. Four. Oh, that, feel good. that does feel good. We got three hours, and let me just tell you, I have fished more three-hour tournaments than anybody in the country, probably. Let me get a bag of ice out from under here. Thank you, sir. Well, we spotted the field three hours this morning, unexpectedly. Yeah, we're just rolling up on the, the noon hour here. Weigh-in starts at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Clayton, New York. He may still hope to win this event, but knowing what the top couple guys may bring to the scales. His goalposts may have shifted a little just to break in 100 pounds at this point. You can do that, salvage the day. You'll still get a top five if you get 100 pounds. But as soon as he breaks 100 pounds mentally, he'll, he'll use that last mm -hmm. whatever bit of time to try to win the event if he, if he can. He's had a quick learning curve up here. In 2020, his first visit, he was 60th. The next year's 85th. Last year is 24th with the big bass. 612. In the last three days. This might be a first time I didn't get bad. See Kenta Kamara up shallow All right. with Corey Johnston. Love it. Same bait, different style. A little three inch Mega Bass Hasdong Shad. Long, long cast on these shallow flats but he has caught some six pounders doing this this week. If you've seen anglers take care of their catch at the live well by fizzing them, if you've wondered how to do that, you can scan the QR code right there and be able to get a video tutorial to save your catch mm -hmm. that you may catch in 20, 30, 40 feet of water at the St. Lawrence or other smallmouth places. You can kind of see those Take a peek on these real shallow flats. A lot of broken rock and sand patches, and they'll use both of them. are beaten. It didn't look very big on the screen. Baby.
crossing that 25 pound mark yet today. Joey Fujita, we remind you if he can mount a mighty charge here in the next three hours or two hours and change, could uh, possibly win the thing. If he could pull that off, he would win also Bassmaster Rookie of the Year for the Elite Series. And a great race between him and Joey Cifuentes. Joey Cifuentes would have sealed the deal. He caught enough weight yesterday, Tommy, to actually seal the deal and finish 16th in the event, which would have boxed out Kiyoya completely. But Joey lost the individual tiebreaker of this tournament with Tyler Rivette, which is the biggest single day bag. So he finishes 17th and opens the door just a sliver for Kiyoya Fujita. But that's normally all he needs to succeed is just a, a glimmer of hope. You know, I was listening to the Dave and Davey show. They were talking about how, and Ronnie, you, you talked about it, how incredible our rookies have done this year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. There is no doubt, and I think I'm Captain Obvious on this. There is no doubt there is also a very, very big technology and electronics connection oh. to how good the rookies have done. Obviously great fishermen, but... One of the big reasons this has been a season where electronics have shined and, and the younger anglers, if you've watched throughout the year on FS1, the guys that shine with it are young fishermen. For sure. Yeah, I'm sort of I think our sweet. people that age have native. Well, I mean, I think, no they, I think our, no our anglers are 25 to 40 years old for our first year guys. So it's it's not like, right. you know, like they're not. I think some of our veterans of the elites have been more blindsided by, oh gosh, this I could be passed by quickly if I don't learn, learn something this. new. Yeah, yeah, I agree, totally yeah. agree. And so it's no yeah. look at all those fish in front of Chris Johnston's <laughs> boat. Wow. I mean that was a school of bass. I in that big group. If I need a lot of three pounders out here is the problem. The odd time you can get a big one. I don't think this is a big one. Come on up here. Let's see what we got. Could be a pretty good one, actually. Enough playing around. Hmm, hard to say. Yeah, decent one, but I don't know if you'll help. No. Won't help. He's not going Well, it could come down to a matter of ounces, maybe just a couple of them. The Looking way it stands way. right now, our top two separated unofficially by one ounce. And of course, it's never settled until it gets to weigh-in time. That weigh-in takes place in Clayton, New York at the Antique Boat Museum at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Follow that on Bassmaster.com on the Yeti hot seat. Mm -hmm. It's getting warm right now. Chris Johnston. The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River is sponsored by Minn Kota.
Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalon. I think this is a good one. We're gonna have to go through customs just to check this sucker in, dude. She is freaking thick. Blimp. I think smallmouth are just, they're filthy little animals. I mean, I absolutely love everything about a smallmouth and they just, I think they're more like stuck in the 70s. They love the mustache. I mean, it's, I could not catch smallmouth until I started growing it out. Now, I don't know if it's a mental, if it's morale up here, um, but that's everything in fishing. Um, but when the smallmouth dash comes out, smallmouth gets stuck. And that's what I, that's what I enjoy. And uh, after this tournament, it'll probably go. You know, we got some deer hunting coming up, but it's, uh, she's staying for a little while. What is happening? Seriously, it's a... Kids who want to become a better smallmouth angler. I guess. Start growing Look it like now. Doc Holliday. <laughs> it's just a little bit. Uh, Everybody kind of celebrating the last few days of summer around Clayton, having a big time. Music what is happening here. Last day of the Bassmaster Elite Series as well, although if you told these guys we're going to have four more events added on, emergency add-on right yeah, here all in. to St. Lawrence, they would all be in. All they would in. all head back wherever they are right now because this place is unbelievable. Where did you go? Corius keeping that shallow water bite very honest. One of the best spawning bays on Lake Ontario right there. <laughs> oh, I hope Crest stops here today. There's so many of them. They're just super hard to catch. Like on the live scope, I've, as soon as I pulled in, I've seen 10 of them. One I missed was like a six pounder. Just came up shallow and first five minutes. Some sun. We get some sun, they're in trouble. Well, he started the day eight pounds back. He's moved up two spots, but he's still over seven pounds behind the leaders. So, took some mighty upgrades to get him there. for it not being that big a one. He, he does not play him like this. I mean, no, <laughs> he's, it's all relative with Corey. Doesn't want to lose it. Come on. Our smallest 418. 
example, his smallest fish being three pounds, six ounces. That Man, definitely looks like a help right there for Corey. Still doesn't have a fish over five. He had averaged about five and a half on day two almost. Yes, they are. Well, that's a lot of bass. Definitely helped. And they're all decent ones to boot. Look at the group of them. Come on, buddy. It's a four pounder. Looking at where we're Decent at right one. now with Chris Johnston and Patrick Walters, we have them right nice. just about tied, and both of them are notoriously low guessers on their weight. So that's kind of, as of now, what it's going to come down to. Four and a quarter. Johnston started today two pounds, six ounces back of Walters. And this, the last yeah. two days, has They're been bath. the time where we have seen some of the biggest ones of the week. I mean, they big and, oh boy. Biggest fish in the lake live here. Should have came right here first thing. It's all right, we got three hours. Corey got second here just a month and a half or so ago in the river exclusive tournament, so he wasn't out in the lake. 
wasn't within off limits either, he was able to fish it. Did you get to talk to Corey and ask why he decided to fish that open and Chris did not? Like, was there a reason I don't they know. both didn't I fish it? Do not know. Three day tournament, what was the winning yeah. weight, Ryan? I think it was like 71, 72 pounds. But when he won here in the fall, one month later than we were here, it was like 78 pounds. So it was about on par for three days what our tournament was yesterday and what it was last year as well, which also broke 100. I think he's as big as I thought he was. Big one, I think. Oh, God, get over here. Come on. Oh. oh, he is having a time with this <laughs> one. <laughs> gotcha. It's good. Beautiful fish. <clears throat> His work still with that drop shot, even though he's a lot shallower now. He's going to help. Yes, he is. I keep doing that. More, more, and more. Where he's going to get up there and challenge for the lead there. Still Chris Johnston and Patrick Walters on top. A statistical tie. Those are estimated weights. Taku Ito, though. Julia Fujita. Both of those anglers have a shot at the century mark as well. Let's see what they can put together as we've got about two and a half hours fishing time left for our 10 today on the last day of the season. Minkota Bassmaster Elite. No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. So great to have everybody with us for our extended coverage. The final day of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. This Mencota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River, Clayton, New York, our fantastic host city. Great, great to host for many, many years now. It's a terrific place. Decades. Decades. Out of place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thousand Islands Chamber of Commerce also hosting us there. Antique Boat Museum, a tremendous facility. You've got to check it out. Julia Fujita, winner last week at Lake Champlain. Five panda. Yes. That looks like the same shot yeah. every time we go back to <laughs> yeah. Koya Fujita. Five and a half, wow. maybe. It's a big one. That is a big one. Oh. That is if like that's a 
Great Lakes grouper. If that is a five and a half pounder, he has a four, <laughs> all fours and a five. So he would get a pound and a half upgrade at least, and that would pull him within a pound of 100. And he's 23-7 to hit 100. Started the day 313 back of the lead. What a season for Kiyoya Fujita. We were warned from Taku Ito late last summer. This young man coming from Japan was the real deal. Pretty much won every single title you could win. Living in Japan, and he has come here and done work this season. And somebody said this is his fifth top 10 this year. This year, this this year, year in yeah. the Bassmaster Elite yeah. Series. He made all three up north. And dude, that is a good one right there. Power pole replay of the day. Pretty much where he left off last weekend here on FS1. Koya Fujita, rookie in the Bassmaster Elite Series. Last one of the year. Power pole replay of the day. My friend, well, at least I think we're friends. Yeah. I'm not really sure yet. I bet you are. It's a we're not second, there. A second at Lake Seminole, second event of the year, a third at Lake Murray. Then he goes and gets a seventh at Lake St. Clair, wins Lake Champlain, and started today in fourth place. Yeah. Strong rookie season yet. He's got a win today to collect Rookie of the Year. Yes. And he is not out of this tournament yeah, no, no. right now. No, no, no. You're right up against 100 after that call. And Tommy, we have all failed miserably. We've talked about, especially last week when he won on Champlain, kind of cracking the, the code with Koya Fujita. Maybe you give it a try. Ronnie's failed. I have failed hey, miserably. You, hey. And I don't feel that mine's mendable. Yeah, you had an in-person experience it and was. a texting spirit. Like there, you've had two different ways of trying to do it and it hadn't worked. Which so have not worked out. If Tommy meets him in person, Tommy will definitely like well, repair if, the. Well, you know, you know. pitch it the way it is. I'm, I'm not. I'm not one of these super connected big baits guys like you two. You know, I'm sort of. I'm just sort of the average. I don't you know, know how wannabe to who wants who wants to know a little bit more about the great Kyoya Fujita. That might work. So what you're saying is just kind of go in there and play yeah. unknowingly. Yeah. So yeah. ask him about stuff non-fishing related <laughs> to get him talking. Is yeah. that what you're saying? We're going to get there. Maybe not, but. Well, Z, he'll qualify for his first classic. What do you okay. give his chances? Anybody else in the field? I chances give his chances Lake? very good. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think your obvious picks are you know, you look at it always, and Such, we've done Christy, so many articles. You look Polinic. at the obvious. Polinick, Christie, Hackney, just because of experience, knowing what the classic monster is. But maybe some dark horse picks, which I don't even know if it's a dark horse pick. A Kenta Kimura, I think will yeah. be very, yeah, very solid has won there, there before. Has as a co-angler. As a, a co-angler. Yeah. Oh. How about Luke Palmer, home state guy? Eh, not yeah. time of year. I will also throw out you a name. Matt Airy okay. has a second, third, and a fourth in pro and semi-pro events there wow. in the month of March really? to April time period. So he's looking to get revenge. I was with him just uh, two months ago in his garage. He's got second, third, and fourth at Grand and was worried being the last man in as of day one or day two, but he is safely I'll in the tell you somebody that would have been a, a favorite there. And he's done well there in the past, and and yesterday destroyed it. Would have been Bill Lowen. Yeah, oh, Bill done Lowen has well. done oh, very awesome. well there in classic. What a disappointing oh, finish! One day on his season. One day did that. Twelve pounds yesterday fell from like six to forty. Well, if you guys remember, he started it, uh, He started his season the exact same way he ended it. He started it lower in the tournament, made a big jump on day two into the top ten. On day three, we saw him not do very well at Okeechobee, drop back down and lose thirty or forty points on day three at Okeechobee as well. So, those two bookend mm. day threes to start it in the year. And the base yeah. in the grass thick. Were the worst, you know, probably of his season. Hey, Hank Cherry will be back. Absolutely, yep. Hank yep. Cherry. 2013. For sure will yeah. be a favorite. There is yeah, two anglers in that field side. that, that Jason Christie and Hank Cherry that have come very close to winning a classic on that body of water. Cherry is a rookie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to catch one any minute, like a good one. Two other guys in the field have fished classics. There we had it at 2013-2016. Brandon Carter's made, made both the classics. Okay. And Jacob Prozik made 2016. 
Well, he had a big day yesterday to, big day. to guarantee his spot. How many total? Fish both? Five each. Those last two? two years are in our field next year. Polnick, Cherry, Christy, Hackney, and Card from 2013. Christy, Hackney, Polnick, Card, and Poroznik from 16. Okay. Gotcha. A lot of young guys. It is six rookies for sure, right, Ronnie? It should be all Major over Classic. this spot. Over the tip or are of we the still point. up in the air on six coal no. sands? Six if we have a winner who double qualifies today, which it looks like we will. Well, this is the longest we've gone in two days without a fish catch, and you know what? It's okay taking a time out, <laughs> Let it it's breathe. Okay. Let it breathe. Yeah, let it breathe. What have we been, 90 seconds without a fish? That is exactly right. It has been a little bit tough. We're obviously losing one of our main competitor or main anglers uh, who have done well with Welcher not fishing home, all day. But. Um, friends and family, we need uh, we, we need two big coals and uh, we'll have us a good day. You know, it's been it's been a finicky day, but uh, hey, we're gonna keep on grinding, keep on trucking, see if we can go find us some big Lake Ontario smallmouth and see what happens. So we got two more hours, see if we can do it. much Patrick Walters and his roommate Justin Hamner one of the few anglers in this tournament that their weights went up dramatically each day we unofficially have Patrick Walters over the 100 pound mark earlier today concentrating from 15 out to 25 feet of water and as you heard it his target is to get rid of two of those right there that are still in his live well to jump over Chris Johnston and there is no doubt about it, this tournament, this time around on Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River out of Clayton, New York, this one's going to go down to the last cast today here on FS1. Started with a five pounder today. Yes. In the first hour of fishing. So got two, three and three quarter pounders. He wants to upgrade. Himself another five pounder about an hour and 15 minutes ago, and he's on the run right now. You got about it, Tommy. Made a comment yesterday. He definitely has a vice principal look. And <laughs> looking to put this one away, Patrick. Rose. Okay. All right. This Johnston, though, has got the edge on him by a, a lone ounce, unofficially as it stands right now. Taku Ito having the best day of all of our 10. As far as weight goes on this day, Kyuya Fujita, we just saw him land a good one. Five pounder to improve his position as well. And Corey Johnston moving into the top five. More on the way. Yeah! Hustler! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Well, including travel time, we've got a little over an hour of fishing time for our anglers, our 10 who are left on this final day of the season. Clayton, New York, what a place for this Bassmaster Elite. Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite on the St. Lawrence River. We love Clayton, we love the Thousand Islands Chamber of Commerce for really pulling out all the stops as they always do to make it a perfect experience. All the volunteers who work so hard. And I uh, just can't wait to get back here because of the fishing, because of that great place. And uh, here back in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, we take a look at the season we have had here. Of course, bang up finish here in our northern swing. But uh, man, it's, it's been it's been an eye opener this season all year long, starting down at Okeechobee. Absolutely right, Tommy. And really, I think the things that you'll take away from this tournament here on FS1, obviously a, a, a very powerful rookie class, some of the best rookies we have ever seen on the Elite Series. But I, looking back on this season, we have seen anglers have dominant years trying to win the Angler of the Year title. And what Kyle Welcher did here, 
He was a professional gambler, po poker player, before he came to the Bassmaster Elite Series, and he did not lay up coming into this tournament. In fact, put himself in, if not for that mechanical issue, put himself in position to win this tournament. I will forever remember what he did on day one of this tournament because he did not say, man, if I just catch this amount of bass, I'm going to be in the mix in this tournament. He went out, he tried to win it, and he executed. Absolutely. Ronnie Moore, what stands out to you about this year? So it far? has been fantastic to end the season here at the St. Lawrence River. The fact that we have had probably, I believe I calculated right, seven smallmouth bags in the history of BASS, over 27 pounds in competition. We have had eight bags over 27 this week, setting the all-time record as well at 29.5. What a great way to end the year. The dynamic of having Lake Ontario open to these anglers, having the St. Lawrence River, you can pick your poison. But at times, like Mark Zona said, there is a place to be at, in Lake Ontario. A couple of those bays, a couple of those places, you had to be there if you wanted to outlast the rest. I mean, 70 pounds to make the final day, absolutely incredible. If you really think about it, there are going to be probably three anglers today that caught over 100 pounds of smallmouth and did not win this tournament. It said nobody ever <laughs> in the history of the Bassmaster how Elite How long Series. can this trend yes. continue? That's, that's the big question here. I, how, how long can they keep getting bigger? How better can the fishermen get? The fishermen are better yes. each year. It's just a magic but combination, and we always want to come back. What an ending for the season. This is going to go down to the wire. Big hats off to all of the anglers. Bassmaster staff, cameramen and women throughout the year, and everybody that has watched on FS1. This has been a very, very memorable season on the Elite Series. Oh. Oh. And if you talk about it, guys, we mentioned it when Patrick Walters broke 100 pounds, but with Chris Johnston doing it unofficially, that's 56 times we've done it. And to put it in perspective, there's only four times we've done it on smallmouth. So if you're watching for the first time, don't take it for granted. This is still early history in the sport of fishing when it comes to smallmouth. Hey, now. Seen a bladed jig bite here, finally, in this tournament. God, that's fun when they eat that. It is. <laughs> Thank you, help. <coughs> Tommy, I love using spinning rods, but it was fun. it was really nice to see one caught on a bait caster oh, right there. It just that's like the old school days. You've had to look hard to see that happen <laughs> yes, in the course of this did. coverage here. Just not the thing here. But yes, good to see. It will be the thing here in about four weeks, though. <laughs> that is the way to fish. I'm falling. Eastern Basin of Lake Ontario. See, I had a lot of anglers say they doubted we'd get 100 here because you don't get four I, good days of weather. Right. But I despite honestly thought, that. I really thought day number one was going to hurt Need some hitting six. 100. And it was like our best day. Exactly. There's so many of them that live here. If Taku Ito, who was just ounces on Bash Trek under the 100 pound mark, if he does indeed come in over 100, and let's just say that's it, that would be the fifth instance at the St. Lawrence River of 100 pounds, tying Lake Gunnersville for the number of wow. century belts in history. That is <laughs> such a weird and stat <laughs> I never thought we would hear in my lifetime. <laughs> Amistad is, Gunnersville's had five instances, Amistad has six, Clear Lake seven, Santee Cooper eight, Fork at nine and Lake Falcon at 15. Those are the, the top lakes for 100 pound bags in the St. Lawrence. That is amazing. Yeah. That's, That's really no one would have believed you five years ago. No, <laughs> yeah. 10 years ago for sure. <laughs> oh, Lord. It ain't, it ain't too late. Definitely not. That, that is hard to comprehend. 
I almost won a tournament here in 97 with 16 pounds of bass a day. If you <laughs> caught that in this tournament, you're dead last. <laughs> yes. I was going to ask you that. Literally. See, in 2002, Krieger won with 17 a day, and then 11 years later, Brandon Polnick went to the lake and got 88 pounds, 12 ounces. Did he kind of open up that fishery? The fish increasing that much in size over a decade. It absolutely did. I remember calling Kevin Van Dam fishing a different tournament here and said, dude, I, they're bigger. And he's like, big how? I said, big like 18 to 20 pounds everywhere you go. And he's like, well, you'll win. No, everybody caught that. And it, it literally happened. It was a collision with zebra mussels and goby. Food and eyesight for a small mouth. Not a big one. And, you know, and the other here. thing, I, this is where it first hit throughout the Great Lakes. Barges coming through, a lot of it coming out of their ballast. And that combination of giving smallmouth 2020 vision and a complete buffet of a very protein rich, lazy forage that you do not need to swim around like you saw at Champlain and lose weight. I hate to say it, these smallmouth are lazy and sloppy compared to anywhere else we go. I mean, you get way out there, they're a little bit dumber. Yes. Get over here. Little guy. And just around the corner from Corey Johnston, who is, I'm talking about working on them shallow. Koya Fujita. Just saw him catch a good one about 15 minutes ago, big five pounder. I'll say this, a lot of a lot of fans watched the Lake Champlain event, and they they're just like us. They are so eager to learn more about Kyoya Fujita. There is a language barrier here. He's learning English, and Dave Mercer does the best he can to, to engage in conversation. Everyone's saying Bassmaster needs a translator. One thing that I learned about him, he does not want someone speaking on his behalf. He wants to do his best to try to learn it. Yes. He did a, a two and a half minute tackle tip with our guy Dalton Tumblin after the win, explaining he his stuff. He has a translator. He does. He yes. has a guy, his media guy, one of the boats right yes. there that's videoing and, and whatnot. So he always has someone there if he needs it but he would like to speak about his sponsors and about his techniques, if he can, on his own. He had a great speech that he did at Lake Seminole, his second ever elite event, to kind of introduce himself, yes. saying thank you to Bassmaster America, this is my dream, very cool. So, you know what, kudos to him for wanting to, to figure out, speak for himself as well. But think about this. And, and I wouldn't and, want and, someone and, to speak for me, and, and mess that up, you know, and then get misquoted. No, and, I know that, Ronnie, yeah, for you. Well, Don't hey, worry easy, about group that. leader, easy. It, the, the thing about Koya Fujita is, this is an angler that has not, you know, before coming to the U.S., this dude has not fished for smallmouth, he has not fished water this size. Uh, you know, a lot of our rookies have seen things like this. This guy has not seen these things before, and, and we've talked about it at length. Imagine him 10 years from now. Think about that. Well, once again, he can somehow engineer a win here. He will leave with not just two wins on the Elite Series this year, but the Rookie of the Year prize as well. I, and I saw a Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup on his passenger seat. It didn't look like Koya was happy that something was out of place in the boat right there. <laughs> Joey C. Fuentes, though, as it stands right now, hanging in there, just hanging in there, waiting it out, seeing if he can take that to take that title of Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Rookie of the Year, an award that gains seemingly more prestige every year because the rookies are so much better with each passing year. We're going to pass a few commercials on your way and be right back. Yeah. No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS.
getting near the end of our coverage time. Just wanted to show you some scenes from the Antique Boat Museum here in Clayton. They've been so kind to us. All our weigh-ins, takeoffs taking place there. We've talked to Davy Height uh, inside. This place is gorgeous. Beautiful. As we say, it is not another roadside attraction. This is a big, lot of resources, well-funded, and very, very interesting, oh, yeah. well-kept history of boats, including speedboats like the old Miss Chrysler there, the Drop California. So much lacquered mahogany, <laughs> it is. rich. Oh, we have got some rich, Earth rich dogs. mahogany for sure. Definitely something you want to check out if you get up here. This part of New York State, which is great for bass fishing. I think Kyle Welcher would agree. He was able to come in here with a six point lead. That's the Bassmaster Angler of the Year and extend that lead and make a Ooh. very big decision on day one that made it all happen. Inspirational story. Let's get out to Kyle Welcher right now. Do you have it in your mouth? But aerodynamics on that one. <laughs> I need Big to fish baby. alert from Skeeter Boats. Matty Wong, he's been out of service. Five and a half pounder. Wow. He's built a bag over right 22 and a half pounds. Swimming up and I, I couldn't see my bait, but then it's just, I was like, he's got to have it because he's not following it down. He is one of two anglers today, Matty Wong is, that needs to win this event to make the Bassmaster Classic. Or, I'm sorry, he's the only one who That's needs nice to win one. this event to make the Bassmaster Classic. Scott Martin has to finish fifth or better. We will Wong take anything right now that's over three pounds. Another one with it, right beside it. Being yep. swallowed. Right here. Well, he is slowly <laughs> scratching his way back right now. A rough morning for Kyle Welcher with mechanical issues, losing over two hours of fishing time. Good one handed landing right there for Kyle Welcher. Came in just one pound, one ounce behind the leader, be Walters. Oh, uh, yeah. He only needed 20 pounds, 11 ounces for a century belt. He told Mercer this morning, let's go out there and get that and win. Make a little adjustment. Hard to adjust in three hours, but had to. Just need a big one. And if you've not been to Lake Ontario, Tommy, you have been. Yes. You do not see conditions like this no, very often. Like, it looks like a. <laughs> it is a rare well, no, situation. Over three pounds, anyway. Broke some stuff right there in my life. He's almost to the rocks. So I gotta stop him. I just snagged him when he came up one time. Time to mess around with his joke. Nope. That's right. Fool around and find out with uh -huh. Kyle Welcher all season long. <laughs> well, 
one story still going on right now. We are just starting to get all of the fish catches from Taku Ito, who has been a little bit out of service, got to see some nice ones earlier, but he is working on the biggest stringer of the day right now, having him just under 25 pounds fishing the Henderson Bay area of Lake Ontario. So much rich history in mm -hmm. that region of the lake. Getting it done with Taku Ito. Looking to get his second win here in the St. Lawrence River. All of these earlier today. Majority of Taku's fish throughout the week, 25 to 30 feet of water. Thank you. Fishing a lot deeper than a lot of the other leaders in our top 10 here on Championship Sunday. Oh, yes. Well, he said Smallmouth Disneyland was under construction. I don't know. Looks like everything is back intact. Yes. That's That's 27 good. pounds on day two. He needs that now. for the win. Great, oh, great. yes. He's close. He's got four what a year. five pounders. Oh, what, what a year, year on the Bassmaster hey, Elite Series. Congratulations to all our anglers and I must say congratulations and thanks to all these cameramen. They are super yes. pro, they are fearless, and they have the hardest camera gig in the world. All of our all of our cameramen who work in this are heroes to us yes. for sure. Every cameraman and woman that covers the Bassmaster yes. Elite Series, the entire BASS staff and all the volunteers that help us throughout the year, marshals included, and obviously all of the anglers on the Bassmaster Elite Series, just an incredible season here on FS1. Right around the corner, don't forget, one o'clock Eastern time, it's gonna be some live auto racing on FS1 mm. here. Arco Racing from Milwaukee, so stick around for that. And don't remember. Well, weigh-in coming up on Bassmaster.com at three o'clock. That's our next show Whoa. on FS1. Bassmaster open from yeah. Watts Bar Lake in Tennessee. That's coming up. We're not done with bass fishing for this year. Tommy, I'll be hunting. I am actually not going to be here for this. <laughs> Watch this space. Thanks to everyone who's followed us all year long. And we will see you next time. Three pounders. Was that far enough? Yes, it was, because here they come.
crazy how when you get to a waypoint, there's just fish. Everywhere. Same place I've caught them before is where they are again. Welcome back to Live Mix, and uh, we're sitting here watching Kyle Welcher uh, in Justin Atkins' boat, by the way, uh, crawling up the, the standings. I mean, I think he's, uh, let's see, we, we finally see what his limit is, and I know that he's got another four-pounder that's not marked in there, so his weight's a little heavier than what that shows, but uh, he's still in about fifth place. Uh, had a tough morning. Fantastic day yesterday, a tough morning this morning, but it's still going to work out all right. We've got a heck of a tournament going. We've got two guys over 100 pounds. I'm saying Taku Itu is, is uh, one of the more fantastic sandbaggers uh, in the world, and uh, he's two ounces from 100 pounds, so I'm saying he's over 100 pounds. Oh, yeah. Uh, Koya is, is learning the art of sandbag. And I believe that he's going to be over 100. And, it, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're treating him kind of harsh, sandbag. You, you guys just don't want to be uh, over. Yeah. So y'all y'all take a little bit off that. And I think there's some of that off on, on Wiltshire as well. And and even Corey. Uh, you know, but Corey's got a long way. That's a, he's not got a seven-pound sandbag there. He's seven pounds from 100. Uh, he was determined last night. He was? He knew he needed 28. Well, yeah, he said he could cut the most weight he ever caught over here. He said it was twenty nine nine, so yeah, he could do it. But. He wanted it, and he want he want. We was talking about catching the dirty thirty, and he he said the most he's ever caught is twenty nine nine. So, so it's possible. It's possible. They know the rocks. They know the rocks, hey. and they know the they know the river better than anybody, and 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 Lake Ontario as well, but. Uh, and and that stuff always that always helps, mm -hmm. but it's not everything. Yeah. Patrick Walters is obviously, you know, right there. He's the biggest sandbagger. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, he, he we we saw him yesterday come uh, his crawl up to a twenty five pound mark on bass track, and then he checks in. He told me, well, the coal I needed a five six. Yeah. That's what he told me when he checked in. And there's Taku. Let's see what Taku's doing. He was fishing right by me. You see the watercolor, how it's green over there? It, it, where I was at, it got even greener. He spent a lot of time yesterday around the islands. Yeah, he he's uh he's in the, on the American side. If that helps, that looked like a big one. Yeah, I, he's sweet talking it. I think all my I was catching fish shallower than he was, and I think all my fish left yesterday and they all went to him he was a little that's ways because out. they love him more <laughs> <laughs> they want their they wanted to go see disneyland oh. what's the smallest fish let's see here He's got three fives, four fives, four ten. <laughs> a four ten. Jeez. That is that's, a big one. That's a big one. Oh, my God. It's so hard to tell, though. You know, oh. uh, you can think that fish is small and it's way oh, bigger. Oh, but look how is. long he is. Yeah. Oh, my God. And he's gonna, you're not going to let anybody see the bait. No. <laughs> He's good at it. He didn't even, yeah. He, he didn't even weigh it. All right, I want to see the one he throws out. We're, we're froze up. Stop being froze up. You're going to see Come the on. splash in the water from him throwing right. back. <laughs> oh. No way. Oh. Yeah. He caught another one? I don't know. But he's, you know. There again, he just caught that and didn't weigh it. And so if you really don't know, maybe that's pretty accurate. Sometimes the cameraman is, is really don't let you sandbag as much as others. Yeah. So. But Chris, our leader there, you know, he's got a 
Chris figured he needed 27 to win, have a chance. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. He, we, you know, we were all hanging out at the motel last night. And he knew he needed 27 or 28 to have a have it have a shot. You know, as good as Patrick's caught him all week, he's not going to stomp his toe. He's going to catch him. It's just how good does he catch him? Does he catch right. 24 or does he catch 27? Right. And right now, it's a virtual tie. Yeah. I mean, there's just one ounce separating them on bass track. Uh, we we can talk all the sandbag and stuff you want to talk, but, I mean, the truth of the matter is they they, they do that. And everybody does, and, and they're not immune to it, and, and they're probably both uh, showing light on bass track. Uh, they do that on purpose so they won't be embarrassed by having more or less than what they have uh, yeah. When they show up to the deal, to the weigh-in, then you got Taku and with a <laughs> pretty impressive sack. I'm I'm guessing he's over a hundred pounds. I mean that's I mean you know just this place just keeps getting more and more impressive all the time, more and more impressive. They're getting bigger, right? And Koya is pound and a half from a hundred, mm -hmm. and you know. The way that goes, from my perspective, watching you guys, as you look at this fish, you catch this fish, you got a five-pounder. You say, well, it's four and three-quarters. I'm going to knock a quarter off. Mm -hmm. Well, you do that five times. That's a pound and a quarter, right? That's the way it is. It's yeah. just and, and, uh, and if you go a little heavy, then it's a pound and a half, which is, and I'm sure uh, Goya has figured that out, you know. You know, we all knew that there was going to be multiple century belts on this when this schedule came out last year. You know, anytime the lake's open now, I believe, as as big as these fish have gotten, that there's going to be multiple century belts, on, if the weather allows it. And, uh, of course, the weather didn't even slow the guys down the first day. I mean, we couldn't have had any worse conditions the first day, and they still, oh, and they they still caught them. Oh, yeah, 29-pound yeah, bag. Yeah, that was crazy. I wasn't planning on that many guys going to the lake the first day and i guarantee you 60 or 70 went oh it was more than that i think because i was at the mouth of the river i didn't even go in the lake and i was one of the first 10 boats and uh literally after i stopped i started fishing there was boat after boat after boat going straight in there and i was like y'all are crazy and they all caught them too it's crazy well and and that's there was several and i won't mention all the names or, or any of the names really but they, they had the conversation on Thursday afternoon, the weigh-in line, I made a tactical error. I assumed that they wouldn't yep. go. And so they stayed in the river to stay safe, thinking that they would go the next day with everybody, but everybody left them. That's what I did. Well, I, that's why I said I wasn't going to mention I mean, that's, that's, that's the 100%. Tactical, but tactical I, errors all the way down the list there. But, so. you know, I, I made a business decision. The only way I could not make the classic is if I did not make it back in to zero one day. Oh. Yeah. And... You know, looking back or, you know, looking into the event, looking back now, I didn't even have to have a, a point to make the classic of what it ended up being. But, you know, I didn't know that. So I decided to stay in the river and, and be smart about it. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't want to go to the lake and break down. And I figured I could go to the lake the next day and catch 21 to 23 and, mm -hmm. and be fine. And, you know, I went to the lake, came up shy of 21 and, you know, it was one of the first few out of the cut. But. Um, it's part of it, is you know, still made the classic. Get a little bit of angle to your bonus. There you go. The classic bonus. There you go. So, mm -hmm. more or less a business decision. Yeah. And didn't want to tear my equipment up. Right. My marshal thanked me. <laughs> I'm sure he did. It was still rough out there on day two as far as I'm sorry. Yeah, the lake was not settled down just yeah. yet. Uh -huh. It wasn't gnarly, but it was still rolling. But the last two years, last year especially, we have gotten really lucky with the conditions. Okay. You know, right. we have. But look at Chris. And I want you. I'm, I'm gonna ask both of y'all. Chris is not looking at his unit. I mean, that's what all, all we've seen a lot of this he last few days. Fish, he, he knows that fish <coughs> is looking down on his bait. Yeah. He, 
Okay. And it, now he's looking at his unit. Yeah, I mean, that's tip. That's the typical view. But now he's he's watching his line. Or yeah. uh, I'm just trying to trying to get a feel. Or, or y'all explain yeah. to to the viewers what what yeah. he's actually looking at. So what he's doing is like he saw the fish. It went down on his bait. And a lot of times this week, like for me too, it was everybody. They they they've been pressured so much, so they've probably been hooked before, and they're just sitting there staring at it. And like if you pull it up once, they will not touch it. Like if you move that bait up, like if you think he's on it, almost a hundred percent of the time they will not eat it after you do that. So uh, that's the main deal is trying to keep that bait still, try to keep it lifelike, and make it look like it's actually a goby or something instead of like them seeing it get yanked up and it kind of spooks them and they will not eat it so uh, yeah, if, just, if you set the hook too early yeah, this week they yeah. were not you might as well reel it in That's, it was over they they knew they really yeah, yeah it was it's a hundred percent i did it so many times hey, you'd see them go down on it and you'd feel like that little rock or something or they would just grab right in the back side of it they wouldn't eat it all just and, a little bitty bait too and they still barely nip it you pull it away you'd see the fish swim off it's and crazy. you know you seen chris kind of turn away from it <laughs> you know some guys think that you know, once they see the fish go down on their bait, that, you know, maybe if they turn the live scope off the fish, it will kind of help it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me it's like uh, watching water bull, but water won't bull if you're watching that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's best when you're throwing a top water not to yeah, look at it. That's right. You know, I mean, it's, you know, you wait till you feel it. It's the same thing with live scope. Like, yeah. you'll see them shoot up at it sometimes, right. and you'll think they'll have it because, like, you can see those drop shot weight sitting just all over it. Yep, and you, I did it yesterday, and I missed a giant because of it, and I was all excited. I was like, that's a big one. Flipped over there to it, and it went straight up to it. I seen the weight, and I thought he had it, and he was just sitting next to it, and I missed him, and sure enough, he swam away. Never seen that fish again. Last year was easy, but we were here a month earlier. Mm -hmm. This year, it, you can definitely tell the pressure has been – laid on the fish this year oh, yeah. i mean there was so many fish that would just go down and, and look at your bait and just sit there it ain't like they would go down look at it and swim off they would just sit there and look at it yeah time and, to pick uh, it apart yeah they were picky you could throw whatever you wanted last year and this year it's so picky about what you want what you needed to so throw. okay so tell us uh tell tell the viewers what what that means i mean you know if you could throw it whatever you wanted last year now uh -huh. yeah they were picky what do they want they want something that looks really lifelike. And uh, I was throwing that Minobi by Excite Baits. They just came out with it right before we came up north, and it looks just like a goby or a little, actually a little bait fish. So it worked out perfect. I put like a little scent on there too, and uh, they they seem to like it. You know, you'd have to swap up the colors, you'd have to swap up the bait sometimes, and uh, that's what it took to get them to bite. You throw it a fish for ten minutes, chasing it down, and you finally throw one thing, and it might finally eat it, but. That's how picky they are here. And they're getting like that because of the pressure. You know, like last year, like Brock said, you could throw whatever you want. You could throw a hook out there and you could catch them. And this year it's different. They're, they're, they're he, feeling the pressure. Did he share some of these baits with you? No. They, they, don't, they don't believe any of the baits I use. Well, he, <laughs> he, he, he hadn't, don't have the best track record here. This was the first year he made the cut. So it's kind of hard to take him like, yeah, okay, okay, we need to listen to Tyler. Yeah. But no, two days of practice, you know, we really didn't have a whole lot to go by. I mean, yeah. it sounds like, you know, two days is, I mean, what's the difference between two days and three days? Well, it's a lot on this body of water. It's huge. You know, um, basically all I got to do was run history here. Uh, yeah. You know, I wanted to spend a day in the lake and a day in the river. Well, you know, the lake is so massive. Even the river, you know, is, what, 90 miles long, Yeah. you know, of fishable water. So we didn't get to do a whole lot of playing around and, and exploring, so to speak. We just kind of went and did our normal thing, and that's why I don't listen to Tyler. Because <laughs> you're I will next year, though. <laughs> yeah, you will next year. <laughs> He's got year, some yeah. credibility now that's on right. the St. Lawrence. Yeah, finally. <laughs> this place has got my butt beat every time, and. Finally, I took a turn. Punched through. Busted yeah. through. Finally, Atta just boy. busted Atta through. Boy. Just yeah. sat there and busted through. Yeah, so, you know, we've been talking so much all day about how you guys are families and everything else, and then y'all are like brothers. Y'all just hit each other. Oh, yeah. Fight each other. So, Matty Wong has a 5'8", and he's, you know, he's not. It'd be really hard for him to, to get mm -hmm. to, to 100 pounds. It's not going to happen. And Scott, you know, 
I think Scott had to really catch him today to try to get his keep his classic hopes alive. I think he yeah. needed to move up to He's fifth. got a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. But, you know, he was also like six pounds behind fifth. You know, there's, there's a yeah. lot of things that go in this last event. It's not I just, know. Ang- I know. you know, there's angler of the year. There's the tournament itself. There's classic guys, you know, on the bubble guys. And then there's, you know, guys fighting for their career. There's so many things going on in this event. Mm-hmm. Uh Rookie of the year. Rookie of I the mean, year. I mean, uh, it's just so much going on. Joey is thinking, oh, my gosh, Welcher went down. That gives Goya another point, you know. But now sure. Welcher's right there uh, at Goya. So is, Angler, is Rookie of the Year not decided yet? It's no. not, it's not it's decided till the day. Koya, Koya has to win, though, to be, out, to be been, honest. No, I think really? he's got to get second. I thought he – Yeah, I think it's second or so, but – yeah, I feel bad because I tied Joey same weight, but I got the tiebreaker for one point from him, so I really would feel bad for Joey. And, you know, if Joey won two events this year. You're a mean guy. If, I feel bad. If Joey won two events this year and he didn't w- win rookie of the year it's, and didn't have any bombs, I mean, just tip your hat, you know. Just look at the yeah. rookies. All but at the them. same time, if Goya wins, he's going to have two wins. Yeah. And it'll be first and, mm-hmm. first and second, have four wins between them. I mean, the rookie class this year is – phenomenal like yeah all, how many rookies? how many are in the classic a bunch like, a that's bunch. crazy they're yeah. all they're all really really strong with their electronics in this yeah. show this this year yeah. definitely mm. you know talk about timing with with welch there you know the first run after he wins angle of the year he breaks down or closes up angle right year. right mm-hmm. timing is everything and uh and especially in that regard i mean from and from his standpoint you know he's going off worst year of his career yep finished second in the classic yep and then has a terrible year i mean the final day of the of or you know of, of the final event that those are the kind of days where a lot of guys are saying i'm quitting i'm going to quit you know i don't think that he did because he's not that kind of Wow. guy but i mean you know you have a year or two of that and then but then he comes back with a, an aoy i mean those are two big disappointments mm-hmm. you know clark did that a couple of years ago too you know clark missed the classic and, yep and then he came back and had a year where he made zero mistakes in right. one angle of the year that takes that i mean you, i had two bad days this whole season and i ended up ninth like i was in third for a while and just from two bad days, it dropped me that far. So it's still like how he stayed on top like that. Mm-hmm. And now he gained a lot more points above uh, Cobb. So, like, that's crazy. He never never missed a cut. Me and Brock were talking about that. Like, if you don't make, if you don't miss a cut, you'll be in the top, what, five? You'll be up there. That's yeah. for sure. So. And Stetson Blaylock didn't he, – he never missed a cut. Just him and Kyle, the only two. Really? Yeah. Dang. And Blaylock's done that before. I mean, he's just yeah. consistent – consistent mr consistency that's what you need here so it's what you need yeah to survive and then you got scott who's just you know he's been fairly consistent but you know still battling Uh and the classic means so much to him oh yeah and i and i get it i mean you know it's it means so much to all of y'all but then the rest of us are sitting there going i know he's got this he's got this rolling yeah on his back look at taku I think when we came up north, uh, Taku was about 82nd in points. He was. He made the cl- he made the classic at Champlain. Then then his yeah. work at Saint Clair, Champlain, and and here, it's he crazy. could have been could have been out. It is crazy how much that board flipped just from yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a tough fishing world up here, and this will beat you this lake right here because everybody's getting better at it, and you have to catch over 21 pounds to say you did something here. I got 20 pounds yesterday, and I felt like that was the worst bag ever. <laughs> like, I don't even think I got a clap for it because 20 pounds here is just normal. Nobody it, clapped for you yesterday? I don't think so. No. no. You must have not have been smiling. No, I wasn't. I did have a 6'6", six, six, so I think that might have helped. But uh, yeah. You had a 6'6 six, six and only 20 pounds? Exactly. <laughs> I had some mega. Man, you had a bad day, didn't you? I had a terrible day. <laughs> I had three pounders. I mean, nobody wants three pounders here. But the crazy thing is about this river, I was talking to uh, Mark Menendez the other day, and this way back when, y'all know, when rainbows were black and white, and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was over here, and uh, uh, he said 11 pounds over here used to be 
awesome. Oh yeah, it's yeah. crazy how much yeah. difference it is. And like you used the largemouth fish, and, and I guess smallmouth too. And he said that's it's crazy. Like if you got to nobody, pounds, went, you were in a top ten. Yeah, nobody fished for smallmouth then. No, that is cool. It's crazy how different it is now. And I guess with the gobies, yeah, I think Forrest Wood won the first one up here. He, mm -hmm. he averaged like twelve or thirteen pounds a day. That is crazy. Right. I'd love to come up here one year and have no electronics. I mean, I'm, I'm a big electronics user now. You know how I'm with the game now. You got to do it if you don't want to get left behind. So I, I learned it pretty quick, and I do it at my house as much as I can for crappie, sockle, and uh, that's the only time I could really use it. But uh, I mean, look right here. Like it pays off whenever you got to come to a place like this, and you got you, even the guys that don't like live scope are having it on their boat this year. Because mm -hmm. I mean. I mean, you could, I don't know, like you might not like it, but you got to be, there's a difference between being smart and dumb about it because you, you can just keep getting your butt whooped by it or you could join it, you know. You can't beat them, join them, you know, so that's what it is. Hmm. So all the guys that are still talking bad about it, I guarantee they got two of them on their boat still. So it's funny. It's funny listening to guys talk about it bad and then they, you see them idling out with a live scope on the front of their boat, so. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, don't, don't, I mean, I'm y'all don't start. <laughs> um, I'm in the middle of this. I don't want to. Oh yeah. So I can only imagine what it's like when when uh, at y'all's yeah, house that on, fish won't at, bite at these now. events. He pulled it away. <laughs> if he catches it, I'm gonna I'm gonna give give. I you. guarantee he don't. Okay. I believe you. I believe you. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. When you pull it up that little bit, it's they, done. It's it, over. You it's might as well pull the troll motor on. Troll motor up. It is crazy. Like that first day, I had the 24, and it was so windy. That's, I think, what helped me because I would throw out there, and I have a huge loop in my line from the wind. And by the time I'd finally reel it up and get to the bait, it had been 10, 15 seconds of just sitting there, and I think that's what really helped. And I kept that in mind for the next couple of days. And I had a, I had a school. On day two. That's a different fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. That's a, that's a small one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On day two, I had a school that, you know, I didn't go to the lake the first day, so I was really looking forward to getting to this school. And uh, they were really, they wasn't no five-pounders, but they were in that four to four-and-a-half-pound class. And I get there, oh, no. and here comes Lee, just <laughs> interrupting everything. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I get there and I, I I look there and there's thirty or forty sitting by this boulder and I throw my my drop shot over there and they all went down just all nose down to it and I'm just sitting there with my rod just come on and I feel a goby hit that thing and I thought it was a fish and I pulled up when I pulled up the whole school just followed my bait up never caught one really never caught one <laughs> well how can they how can those that you know thirty smallmouth right there and that goby come up here and hit the bait and they not eat the goby. I don't know. That's what I, I say. I don't know. I say that all the time. You know, Hook and Look did a, a sh episode here, and it was really fascinating on how many fish are actually down there and how many gobies are actually down there. It was really fascinating. Mm -hmm. So basically, these guys, these these gobies are so numerous down there that these these fish are just slugs. That's I've never know. I've never scuba dive before, but I would love to do it here. Yeah, you know, I had that yeah. one real big It'd be really interesting. Since then, I haven't really um, capitalized on some things. But I've had a few bites that I think were big ones. What place does Scott need to be in? Fifth. Execute on. Prosnick put it in a pretty good perspective for us at the hotel the other night of what goes on when you catch one. Two pounder to bite, and then five pounder falls into the boat. These fish have moved, though. I mean, it's definitely different today. The fish are not aggressive, very lethargic. Yeah, he, this is his worst day. Yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot of fish catches this this it's, afternoon. Uh, no. huh? Everybody's I'm got sure a limit. The but them, though. I'm sure there's already a couple of people over 100 pounds. Just this side of the lake right now is just kind of off. The lake's so big that they're biting somewhere, and and we're all spread out. Like yeah. I'm on this side of the lake, and I know that Patrick and all those guys are on the Canadian side. So there's definitely fish to be caught. I just Man, I'm running out of time here. Honestly, I could catch yeah. three or four. All he needs to do is find really one boulder. I could find a That's all it takes. Them. Yeah. I just, yep. just haven't really. I put up on one boulder yesterday. There were seven of them on there. And that's where I filled up my limit at. 
there were three pounders, which was meh here. Oh, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> but, I mean, he, that could help him uh, pop yeah. potentially. I don't think so, though. I mean, he's I'm got. Sure he got over three. He's yeah. got three. Two, he's got a two, 12. Catch a five. That puts him at 20. Yeah. Two, 20, 21. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean he he's got the potential he was to under, grow. He was under seventy pounds, I believe. Though he would have needed oh, 30, he, yeah, 30 to get oh, to yeah. he, he to, was he was under seventy and uh, to get to a hundred, right? To get well, not to get to a hundred, to get to fifth. I mean, he still he's still seven. He's got to have twenty six, twenty seven pounds to right. get into the classic. Yep. Still possible, right? I mean. If he catches two, you know, two like, more fives and it's and like he just said, you know, he could pull up on the right group of fish and get get right in a hurry. Right, that's all it takes. You know, we watched Patrick yesterday catch fish after fish after fish. fish. Patrick's not just catching big ones; he's catching numbers too. I mean, he, right. he was catching a bunch. Wonder why we're not. Uh, no, I just don't understand. I mean, I want to. I'd love to see Patrick. We haven't seen him in a while. Maybe he's out of service. Way over there. Hmm. Yeah, I'd love to be fishing today. It's a beautiful day. Like, well, we can <laughs> after three o'clock. Are y'all going to look? Look at that bass, though. That's when you know you catch. Oh, maybe. Why well, are you coming? I had one of those last week. Did you? No. I think you did. I think it was just up here. Yeah, a little bitty fish. <laughs> this is from just this week with the smallmouth here. I'm still Why are you sticking your thumb that far down in the throat? That's how big they were. Oh, my God. Mine's kind of healed up. Yeah. <laughs> see that? <laughs> they his, can't see that. His was they way up see here that. at Champlain. <laughs> at Champlain, his was up here. He yeah. went down here. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Man. So, at, uh, I'm, I'm, I feel bad for you, Tyler. Look at that boat out there. That's what we need to go fishing on. Yeah, you ain't going fishing on that. So that it, it has its own pond built in. So. Wow, it's got a helicopter pad. Yeah, it does. I bet he does not fish professionally. See, we're looking at stuff that they can't see, and we're not talking about fishing, which is why they're tuning in. <laughs> this is why I'm, I'm I'm hesitant to have you around. I'm sorry, because you're talking about your sore thumb. I get distracted. Did you no. take your medicine this morning? No, <laughs> I took some ibuprofen. No. Anyway, anyway, so, well, I appreciate everybody who did tune in, even though we've had a little bit of a scattered in. We're gonna uh, we're gonna go to a break here real quickly, but we're right now we're we still got Chris Johnson leading this thing. Patrick Walters is an ounce behind him. Taku is two pounds behind that, and then K uh, Koya is three pounds behind that, and Kyle Welcher is continually building after a very tough morning, but a fantastic Saturday. Uh, Scott Martin's got to catch a couple of big ones to move up to the top five if he's going to make the classic today. Uh, chances are uh, it's, he's going to have to have some help in the opens from some other anglers to get there. Matty Wong is uh, requalified on the chopping block. The blade was coming down on his neck, and he saved his bacon. He excelled uh, when he needed to. And and he's just out there having fun today, and he's got 24, 25 pounds. That's cool. Uh, Justin Hamner. Just one of those quiet assassins. Mm. I mean, he's really a good angler, and and he's there, and and uh, looks like he's got uh, a strong sack. Kenta. I mean, you we can talk about Kenta all day and how strong he is, but we've he's got a, an amazing top ten. It's going to be an amazing way in. That you is. Hope everybody sticks around. I know that Tyler and Brock will just because it's because you're making us, you know. I'm not making you. It's interesting to watch. <laughs> I'm joking. I love sitting here talking fishing. Yeah. We're going to sit here and continue talking fishing, but for now, this this show is over for the season. Dang. True. Y'all got to, got to, got to do end this. Dang, so. You didn't have, have to say it like that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll see us here next season. Yep. This sport is full of highs and lows. <laughs> To me, this is the most humbling sport on the planet because there's a lot of things that can happen that you can't control.
you know, a carousel. It's always going up and down and around. You just, you're just riding it. Just similar to baseball. Sometimes you're in a slump, you put a little extra work in and you know, you're back to, to being on a hitting streak. So uh, you always drive yourself to be better. I'm Brock Mosley. I'm from Collinsville, Mississippi. Uh, I'm a Bassmaster Elite Series Pro. I did that playing ball. You know, I, I was blessed to grow up with a group of guys that was very, very talented. And in my eyes, I wasn't near as talented as those guys. I had to work extra hard. I think my high school won 15 or 16 state championships in baseball. But we also took it to the football field. You know, that same group of guys, we played football. We had an undefeated regular season my senior year. We played for a football state championship my junior year. We're just, just a real competitive community. And every time I moved up a level, you know, in ninth and 10th grade, I started playing on the varsity level. Well, it took me a little bit to get comfortable. You know, by the time my junior and senior season rolled around, you know, I'm comfortable. I've taken that same mindset in everything I've done. You know, my fishing career, I've always had to work hard and, and put my time in and can't, you can't sit back and let things come to you. You kind of have to go out there and go get it. Yeah, one thing that really helped me fishing and growing up here playing sports is, is learning, is working hard and fundamentals, no matter what it is. You know, here, you know, I'm from Collinsville, Mississippi, and around here, it's always tough fishing. I mean, for the most part, you know, most tournaments, you go out there, you're fishing for eight or 10 bites a day. That's just what we had to grow up uh, dealing with. You know, they're not, for most of the year, not qu quantity type fisheries. So uh, it definitely helps me in the long run. You know, these guys, now live on the Tennessee River or these Texas lakes where they catch a bunch of fish. They get to a lake where they're catching six to eight bites a day. It kind of plays with them mentally. It de definitely has helped me in the long run for sure. My dad always took me pond fishing when I was younger, uh, real young, uh, and my uncle. And uh, I remember my uncle taking me out on the boat for the first time out on the lake. And uh, so I was always around it growing up and um, that's just it's just always what I wanted to do it was always one of them things that just always made me happy uh, one day in the late 90s my dad took me to the Bassmaster Classic in Birmingham and I was like whoa you know guys actually make a living doing this I was like that's that's what I want to do when I grow up <laughs> there he is That's what we're looking for. The future of our sport is probably brighter than ever. I want, I want kids to know that this isn't easy. Three pounder. But I also know, want them to know it is possible to make a living in this career if you work hard and put your Under time in. Again. If you do make it, never take it for granted. Because I look back and I look at all the guys fishing in the opens trying to make the Elite Series. And I see kids showing up at our weigh-ins looking at us like, we're rock stars when we're literally probably just all a bunch of rednecks with the same dream. Don't take it for granted. Work hard. Do not fail because of lack of effort. Mississippi Special. I have a real supporting family and not just, you know, my wife and kids. No matter what we were doing, we always encouraged one another and they're definitely a backbone to my career and, and support and, and keeping me going and keeping me you know, upbeat, no matter how bad of an event I've had. My number one goal is to provide for my family, for my wife and my two girls. They're the most important thing on this planet to me, um, other than, you know, my salvation. But taking care of them, making sure they have food on the table and a roof over their head, to me, is my job on this planet. And uh, I'm just, grateful that I'm able to do that in something I'm so passionate about and fun and enjoy doing. I'm Brock Mosley, seventh year Bassmaster Elite Series Pro.
They pulled right up on the buoy. I was headed to it. I threw it a dot, but I didn't see it freaking move. And I had two under me, so I was reeling up real fast. Feels heavy. Feels real heavy. Holy smokes. This could be a big one. Come on. He's on a pretty heavy rod. He's going where he wants. Come on. It's got to be a big one. It is strong. Tell how big he is. It's not a giant. He choked it. Decent. Just decent. That. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we need them to be sixes to catch up, I think. Four. 
four and a quarter. He ain't gonna do it. Let me just double check it. Six. And that one's definitely bigger. I think we're gonna go to that other spot. So close. We just need it to be a big one. All right. Here we go, finally. Whew. That's cold. It took a while to catch a cold fish.
I had a 311 and a 314, didn't I? That was my small, yeah. That's my small one. Okay. Where the heck did everybody just come from? I mean, we're out here by ourselves. There's Vegeta. There's Chris. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> Glad we cold out. One more coal, and I'll be not happy, but I'll be glad we got rid of those. I thought fish was a lot bigger than that. Fighting him. He was just digging and digging and digging. This must have been a little shallow. Because I didn't see a boat in sight. I just seen one over there.
The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Folks, our 2023 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series is into its final hour no. as we speak right now. Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River. Ten anglers left in this thing. Duking it out for that last available blue trophy of the year. And we have seen so much. Oh, St. Yeah. Lawrence and Lake Ontario have showed out like never before, yeah. like they do every successive time we get here. Let's take a look at what we've seen today. Mark Zona with our Toyota Midday Report. Kind of bittersweet that we are near the last no. hour of Bassmaster Live of the 2023 season. But that is your Angler of the Year champion, Kyle Welch, uh, getting a little help from his friend Justin Atkins, some mechanical issues, and actually got a little more help from Justin Atkins kind of pointing them to that bay mm. right there, Prince Edward oh, Bay out bay. on Lake Ontario. Throughout practice, yeah, Kyle Welcher yeah. finding those fish oh, no, on Mark. day two of practice, started there, yeah, lived there, stayed there, and put away the Angler of the Year title. That. And I'm gonna take a look right now at Koya Fujita. Oh heavens, I thought we were going to Taku Ito. We are absolutely not gonna do that on the east side of Amherst Island. Koya Fujita leaving his primary spot outside of the St. Lawrence River and Cape Vincent starting eerily close to where Bryant Smith caught his record breaking catch on day number one. Not a lot of bites for Fujita, but they've been the right ones. Tom. They've yeah. been good ones. I think he's still got more fours oh. than fives. He's going to have to change that uh, in short order here because we're running out of fishing time. Exactly right, but a stellar season. Five top tens. For Needed a win today to beat Joey Sefuentes and Rookie of the Year. Either way, we're going to have four rookies in the top 17 of our points race three of them in the top 14 of the AOI race. Look at the size of that thing right there. I'm talking about a Great Lakes dadgum grouper. Good one right there for Koya Fujita. From there, we're gonna get to the mouth of the Henderson Bay with Taku Ito, who looks like he has unofficially gone above that century mark. And you know what happens if you catch 100 pounds of smallmouth and don't win, Tommy? It burns. <laughs> I guess you Fall. It's kind off of off season yeah, not, long. Not in a hot seat way. 25 to 30 feet of yeah. water for young Taku Ito. Said one of the biggest keys throughout his week was downsizing his baits. Small two inch finesse baits marinated and soaked, drenched in his Taku sauce. Good day, good tournament for Taku Ito. Making a little bit of a comeback today compared to what he caught yesterday with unofficially, I believe, our biggest. Stringer of yes. the day. Yes. yes. No. Was it? Patrick Walters came in with the lead today. Not a big lead. Number three, though. Yeah, and looking at an angler that I believe, Ronnie, you said this on FS1. If he weighs in these bass that he is putting in the boat right here from earlier today, he will be the only angler in the history of the Bassmaster Elite Series yes. to have a century Fine. belt on largemouth. And smallmouth bass. Yes, that'll be that, and it'll solidify another top five finish in Angler of the Year, his fourth out of five seasons on the Elite Series. Okay, and the other side of that is, if Patrick Walter is, is to go on and win this tournament and take down this man right here, Chris Johnston, you have Before. done something, oh. Patrick Walters. Chris Johnston, with what he is saying, just not enough. It's almost like he has a very accurate calculator in his head, needing a six to six and a half pound bite to regain the lead. Yeah. Call it 15 to 23 feet of water all tournament long. Drop shot, Ned Rig. Caught it on the fall. Still an unbelievable tournament, unbelievable history here with Chris Johnston and fair to say his brother Corey Johnston as well. Fast track has them both within a well, just statistical margin of error of each other, a three ounce difference listed here. Ooh, a little bit look, of fishing time left. Look who's Boy. fishing next to each other, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Yes, within yeah. the last 30 minutes, Walter saw Fujita and Johnston both show up within his general region. Oh my 
God, the hook fell out. The hook just fell out. If you were watching live mix with the anglers and Steve Bowman, you saw him call out a 311. He has a 314, yeah. somewhere in that range, that his only fish under four pounds to call. And look who's hooked up right next to Patrick Walters. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Chris Johnston. Ready to come fish this point? Do for one to surprise me though. We'll see. Don't think it's big though. Z, do you think Walters and Johnston saw Welcher's mechanical issues and are aware that he has not fished most of the day, or do you think that they are going to be second guessing if they're winning, expecting him to be, you know, catching them as well? Truly an impossible question for me to answer at this okay. point. That's why I said, do you think? I would say uh, no, do that, you, like, do you yeah. think Walters I mean, like, would have noticed? I yeah, think. no, I think both of them because they both yeah. started near each other, just west of Amherst. Just never Island, seen him so show you up. Never, yeah. never saw him till. Yeah. Well, when they blasted off. Do they see him stop after a mile? Well, that's Walters usually a red yeah. flag as well. Good, yeah, good exactly. point. <laughs> <laughs> I did set you up there. You know, it's the last forty-five minutes. There, a four pounder. Boy, you've heard the possible negative of Gobi in the Great Lakes. You cannot say it has hurt this section of the Great Lakes. The only <laughs> thing I, I have seen with my eyes is I have noticed smallmouth now starting to spawn in different, obvious, Gobi really enjoy being around rocks, rock clusters. Yeah. Um, I have small noticed. Mouth eggs. Eating. Yeah, yeah. Right. They, will, they will rip up a bass nest. And obviously sure. that hasn't really Hurt affected this much. area. Yeah. But here's what I can tell you I've seen. Massive amounts uh, on the Great Lakes of population of smallmouth bass starting to spawn on straight sand compared to rock hmm. to be left alone from that nasty little goby that's bothering him when he's spawning and where you do not see goby at all on sand. Hmm. Wow, there's Corey as well. There's your leaderboard as it stands right now. Unofficial still, always remember that. The weigh-in starting at three o'clock, not too far away with Patrick Walters on top, Chris Johnston. Just uh, within ounces, Taku Ito having a good day, the best day of all of them, I believe, out there today with over 25 pounds, our only angler among the 10. The 25-pound mark, Fujita, kind of running out of time in his quest to win this one, to win two in a row and, of course, capture Rookie of the Year, one more time here for you from the Bassmaster uh, Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Man, it's been a wonderful season, and what a great way to cap it off. There's, I, I said before, th these guys would all turn around and come back if we called another tournament to start tomorrow. I yeah. would say, I mean, they yeah. would actually probably do it for free, in all honesty, just to <laughs> fish against each other one more time. And the one thing you could say about this season, talked about it when we wrapped up our broadcast on FS1, what Kyle Welcher did was unbelievable, sticking to a game plan throughout this entire tournament. And and really, we've seen this before on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We talked about it before this event. A lot of times you see an angler try to protect a lead, maybe play it a little bit safe, close to the vest. Kyle Welcher did not do that, especially on the first day of this tournament, and absolutely put this thing away to perfection, sticking with that game plan to live in Lake Ontario. Yeah, and how much risk was he taking on? Well, look what look what happened to him this morning. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that could easily we happen. We said this, on day if one. there's ever a day that you want to have, nobody wants to have a mechanical breakdown, it's after you win the Angler yes. of the Year. <laughs> he was very laid back the entire time today.
Yes. Oh, and oh, I, right. and, yes. okay. Uh, well, I didn't know. I was, didn't want to jump knows? in too early. One big thing yesterday, we had a lot of angler of the year and classic cut line fluctuations uh, to see guys like Hank Cherry, Clark Winlet, Matt Airy, and Jason Christie all kind of gain some points or get around that cut line on day two than to see them be able to get into the classic. We're going to have some big names in our Bassmaster Classic that made it in by the skin of their teeth. Scott Martin still needing to finish fifth today if he wants to make it otherwise. Paul Mueller and Cole Sands may be our last two anglers from the elite wow. field in the Classic. And a hats off also to Matty Wong. Literally yeah. came into this tournament, uh, was not going to requalify for the Elite Series next year. Literally on day two was not going to qualify. Yeah. Dug his way out of that. Uh, and he as well as Kyle Welcher running into the big lake and getting it done. So hats yeah, and off it's to so unfortunate we weren't able to get signal from him today. Yes, yeah, he was he was really tucked yeah. in on the island up, like you said, by Amherst, and, and that is and a tough area with where he was in our top ten. Tucked into that island is what saved him on day one, protected from that southeast wind. So hats off to Matty Wong. We were all picking Chris Johnson to, to do very well here. Did, did you two have Patrick Walters to win on your radar? I did. You did. Okay. I did. More? Wait, in this I event? Did not. In this I no, did you did not. Now you I picked did Johnston, not. I picked Walters. <laughs> I no, he not. was my angler of the year pick though as we take it to the Humminbird Lake Master map. A lot of big ones out in the lake this week, Z. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Again, we started our broadcast off on day one of this tournament, taking a look at all of your five plus pounders on the Humminbird oh. Lake Master lay of the lake right here. And most of them from our takeoff in Clayton towards Lake Ontario. And again, if you're a young angler, high school or college, and you're going to qualify for the Elite Series when there's a tournament here, Fish from Cape Vincent into the lake. There's the template. That is your Humminbird Lake Master Unlock the Lake. From Henderson all the way up to Prince Edward Bay. And it's hard. That, that day one, the weather was rough. It was hard to pull the trigger on going out there in the, one of the biggest bodies of fresh water. Cost some guys hey, I will. classics, cost some guys yeah, some other races. Well. I will give one angler a lot of credit. Scott, Scott Canterbury went up to Hockdensburg on day one and made it the first two days of this oh, yeah. tournament fishing in the river. There wasn't many others that no. were able to execute. On that him. was the Scott that I was incorrect on when I thought oh. Scott Martin went to Ogdensburg. Oh, it was yeah. Scott, Scott Canterbury. Canterbury, but he did catch them. They went fun so. fishing yesterday. Good one, but I don't think he's a. No. 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 Get a big one in the boat before he heads back. Continues his journey back up to Clayton, New York. Patrick Walter still on top, just a shade ahead of Chris Johnston. Taku Ito, Koya Fujita, Al Welcher, Corey Johnston made a good run today, but still not able to get so much traction up that leaderboard. We're running out of time on this final day of the year. Last day of school. We'll be right back. The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River is sponsored by. Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Oh, the sands in the hourglass are racing down toward the bottom now mm. as we get to the end of the final day of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River. We have three, unofficially three, anglers having cracked the century mark here. And I, I made the claim 27 hours ago when this day started uh, that we would see records broken today unofficially. Patrick Walter says 102.10. I think 102.9 wow. was the uh, number last year for Jay Shakur. Of course, none of that is confirmed yet. Jennifer Kyoya Fujita.
そうですそうですそうですそうですそうですslightly ahead of Chris Johnston. This could be a big one. This could be a giant. It's a great big black one. It's like a submarine. I think I hooked Nessie. Goes where it wants to.
just under five and a half. That's a good one. We got time to try and get one more. There was three with that one. Well, at this point right now, it's a you call it between Chris Johnston and Patrick Walters with that catch right there from Chris Johnston. And they got to they got to get back. Like how long? With pretty yeah, they're pretty calm. I mean, he how, made it yesterday. It? He he pushed it about another call it ten minutes. But he's gonna have to let it rip. Mm. One ounce difference. Yeah, and I wouldn't wow. even count Taku Ito out. Brian Evie, cameraman with Taku, said it's pretty accurate, but five and a halfs can turn into five and three quarters pretty quick and make up the deficit. Well, it may come down to the last upgrade. Who gets the last upgrade between Johnston and Walters? And again, as you say, we don't know with Ito, but we will know all before too much time passes. The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power pole. Skeeter boats. Progressive insurance. And by Rapala. Blimp. Mm. Give me some more. Give me some. Let's go, dude. God, I'm fired up. Hey. Ooh. Oh. Oh, Gary. Yeah. Mm. Bye. Bye bye. People? Yes. Got him. Yeah. That's what we're after. Did one more pass. Oh my God, come here, come here. Yes! This is a hammer. I love you. Well, at this time, it's customary to get a bit of perspective on what this tournament has been all about, so we roll with our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake from the Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River. Exactly right, Tommy Sanders. Looking at your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, a massive playing field, about 100 miles of St. Lawrence River to work with just outside of Clayton, New York. But that was not a player. The player in this tournament right here, like every other time we have been to the St. Lawrence River, it's when you get out into Lake Ontario, whether it's on the U.S. side or the Canadian side, the Canadian side, a much bigger player this time around. Well, the big story coming in here, of course, as always at the end of the season, is Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. And that man right there, Kyle Welcher, came in with a six-point advantage. And here's what's funny is Kyle Welcher made a comment before this tournament ever began, I will start in the lake, I will live in the lake. And it was day number one living by that game plan, living by that decision, making about a 50-mile run, 35 miles of that in Lake Ontario, a big Lake Ontario on day one with a southeast wind getting it done and we've known Three Kyle Welcher me, as a gambler right. this decision every single day to so make his way this. into Lake Ontario the reason he held the angler of the year trophy for 2023 and Tommy on the other side of it that is also the reason why he had mechanical issues on the final day preventing him from possibly eclipsing 100 pounds and winning this event as well all eyes, of course, after his big win the week before at Lake Champlain, was this man, Joya Fujita, and as expected, he delivered from the start. He did in a big way, and you kind of knew the way the fishing was set up after watching him at Lake Champlain a week ago, that this one was definitely in this young angler's wheelhouse, posting five top 10 finishes. His first season on the Bassmaster Elite Series, predominantly getting it done between the mouth of the St. Lawrence River, right around Cape Vincent, up towards Amherst Island, fishing in about 20 to 30 feet of water, and it just seemed over and over, that was the image that we got to see with Koya Fujita all week long on Lake Ontario. 76 pounds and nine ounces over the first yeah. three days. And 
really, really going strong on day number four. Many people's favorite memories of this place on the St. Lawrence River was the 2021 victory by this man right here, Taku Ito. And Taku Ito served notice on day number two, and he was back to try and do it again. Yeah, and something different with Taku Ito. He was, if there was a tournament on the U.S. side of Lake Ontario, he absolutely blew it away. So much pressure on the United States side of Lake Ontario compared to that Canadian oh, yeah. side around Amherst oh, Island and Prince Edward Thank Bay. You. The one thing that Taku Ito made a comment about is 20 to 30 feet of water and downsizing his baits. Some baits oh, that yeah. Ron Moore in studio showed us we have not seen ever Five. before on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And if you're not with Taku Ito, you got to be in the boat with one of the Johnston uh, no. brothers at minimum, and especially Chris Johnston. 20 days in the Elite Series on the St. Lawrence River and never outside the top 10. Chris Johnson, imagine his thinking on day number one when he comes with the 28 pounds and three ounces, and he's eclipsed by a new world record. Exactly. Set down on that day. Yeah, yeah. one of the biggest home <laughs> field home <laughs> records, wreckers we have ever covered on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And here's what we have learned about Chris Johnston. It does not matter if it's a St. Lawrence River only tournament or you can go into Lake Ontario. He is always a factor when we come to this body of water, fishing from the mouth of the St. Lawrence River to start in Cape Vincent, all the way out to Prince Edward Bay. But this angler right here, Patrick Walters, watched him all week long. The one hole in Patrick Walters' game a couple years ago, cracking the code of those right there. Smallmouth bass in this tournament in a big way. A lot like Kyle Welcher, Patrick Walters is a big time gambler and he gambled in this tournament on those Lake Ontario small mouth fishing from 15 to 25 feet of water actually on semifinal Saturday quitting early coming back to our takeoff in Clayton New York yet another great season for the young South Carolina angler. and shockingly Tommy normally yes. the this small mouth nice. swing is what lets him down in the angler of the year race and prevents him from winning that title this year it was his home body of water in Santee Cooper his worst finish of the season everywhere else he got it done especially up north writing all of his past wrongs and having a top 10 finish here this week really excelling for most of the tournament doing what he had to do to set him up set himself up for a chance at a victory on the final day with day three total of 28 five and that right there is your Minn Kota unlock the lake Get back out live on the water as we see it make them down to the final upgrade whoever makes the last best one among our top three. Might be a fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think he's gonna help. That was awesome though. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a fish. Might be a fish. So often it has been this way. <laughs> Absolutely. Know. He's gonna be close. I don't think he is. Come on. It's funny how Corey Johnson fights is. fish when he has to come back. You have to, I gotta go in a second. Right. <laughs> that and when that one right really? there is wasting his time. <laughs> Other than last year's time at the St. Lawrence River, the previous best weight was 97 pounds and change. We could have the whole top five surpass that, which would normally get you a blue trophy here, and it will get you possibly a top five this week.
What a, what a tournament, what a year. Mm -hmm. Big hats off to all the cameramen and women, and Bass Master tournament crew, all the marshals, volunteers that helped us, and most of all, the Bass Master Elite Series anglers for a very, very memorable season, all Hello, season long. You talk about your bait or anything? Here, here. Oh, okay. Yeah, right now I'm, I sh may should have had it net rig or something because it's got a little bit of current, but I just found the school of it. Hopefully there's some fives here, but we only got 15 minutes left to fish, so let's see what happened. Tommy, I want you to remember that statement right there from Kenneth Camaro when we're having a grinder, a grimy grinderson next year. Hopefully there's more fives here. <laughs> we have heard that yeah, more so. in this tournament. <laughs> hey, he had a he featured in the lowest weight event of the season at Sabine River. Yes. So top ten there, and he featured in the highest weight of the season, the St. Lawrence River. Same with Kyle Welcher. Wow. Exhausting tournament, man. Unbelievable. Tommy, well, thank you. Thank for being you. our group leader this year. You have been. <laughs> Keeping I'm, us I'm the number in one group line. leader. The ceremonial group Keeping leader, us in yeah, line. if at all. Hey, our, our new group leader here starting at 3 o'clock is going to be Dave Mercer. He's going to get our 10 anglers, run them through there. We'll have a, well, it looks like a Chris Johnston on the Yeti hot seat. So warm, so so uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. See if he can survive it. See if he can make it through the flames and pick up his second victory with the Elite Series here at the St. Lawrence and Lake Ontario. Thank you all so much for being with us all season long. It has been tremendous, and we will see you the next time around.